From the Orange Bowl in downtown Miami, Florida, Sports Channel proudly presents University of Miami football. Today's game features the Pittsburgh Panthers beating the Miami Hurricanes. And no easy task for the visitor here at the Orange Bowl where UM has won their last 33 regular season games. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Orange Bowl in Miami where the Hurricanes have really owned the turf. I'm Eric Reed alongside Jim Mandich. And Jim, this Pittsburgh team that comes in today, 3-4 and 1 their record, but a little bit deceiving. Uh, they play a little bit better brand of football than that. They are tough. Kind of reminds me of my rookie year, Eric. I was sitting next to Larry, uh, Larry Zonka when I was playing with the Dolphins. I looked at, over at him. He's putting a lot of pads on his arms. And I said, Larry, what are you doing today? He said, Jim, we're playing the Bears today. And what he meant by that, a very physical team. And this Pitt Panther team at the collegiate level, very much reminiscent of the Bears. They are tough. They are proud. They're sons of the coal miners. They're going to play 60 minutes of hard physical football out here today in the Orange Bowl. Panthers had a franchise running back by the name of Kervin Richards. Uh, gained over 1,000 yards in his first two years. But he's been nicked up with an ankle injury that's put more pressure on their outstanding sophomore quarterback, Alex Van Pelt. This guy threw it 50 times last week against Notre Dame. They expect at least that many throws today. Well, a couple things come to mind. Richards will not play today, and that's going to hurt him because they're not going to be able to rush the fourth football. But more importantly, Alex Van Pelt loves the play-action pass, and that minimizes that deception for the Pitt Panther Panthers. University of Miami, a winner last week at Texas Tech, 45-10. Outstanding bounce-back victory for uh, the Hurricanes after the disappointing loss at Notre Dame. Well, this is a key game as they gear in on a New Year's Day bowl uh, bid. Well, looking back, Texas Tech, awesome defensive performance. They held Texas Tech to minus 10 yards rushing, a total of 93 yards. This is a very important game. At this time of year, you play them one at a time. If Miami's going to be a factor in the national title chase and play on New Year's Day, it starts this afternoon in the Orange Bowl against Pitt. Panthers of Pitt, Hurricanes of the University of Miami, and we'll hear from head coach Dennis Erickson when we return to the Orange Bowl, Dennis Erickson's game day. Stay with us here on Sports Channel. As much as winning has been a tradition at the Orange Bowl here in Miami, this is also a tradition. The Orange jerseys emanating from that locker room in intimidating fashion. 33 straight regular season wins. As uh, the coach of the Panthers, Paul Hackett, said, the problem with playing in the Orange Bowl is the guys that wear the Orange jerseys. Now, Hackett has said they set the standard, referring to Miami. Miami has been incredible through the 80s, and this is the place where they have really gotten it done. As you said, Eric, 35 straight wins in their home, the Orange Bowl. One of the interesting situations in this football game, Jim Mandich, Pitt, a team that likes to thrive on play action opportunities, they may be without their franchise running back, Kirvin Richards. They'll make a decision probably right before this ball game begins. But their weakness is running the football. That's Miami's strength, stopping the rush. Uh, they know Van Pelt's going to try to beat them early and often up top. Well, Van Pelt is a great talent, and, and the loss of Kirvin Richards would be a great one for Pitt. Nonetheless, I think Pitt's game plan is going to be to attack Miami through the air, particularly on the underneath patterns where Miami has been victimized. You look at the statistics, opponents have completed 60% of their passes when going against the Miami defense. Well, as you see what these teams have done in the past and recollect to last year's 21-point Miami victory at Pitt Stadium, an afternoon where the Hurricanes held the Panthers to 28 yards rushing in 30 attempts, Pitt gained just 182 yards total in that game. In the last Pitt victory, they got to go all the way back to their national championship campaign in 1976 when Johnny Majors led Tony Dorsett and company to a 12-0 record, a Sugar Bowl victory against Georgia and the national championship. Left to right, Anthony Hamlet, Michael Barrow, and Lamar Thomas, the tri-captains for the Hurricanes. Miami off a very impressive route of Texas Tech last week, holding the Red Raiders to negative 10 yards rushing and outgaining them on the afternoon, 563 yards to 93. Pittsburgh has won the toss. Miami will kick off. The Panthers will receive, so we will see the young sophomore Alex Van Pelt. Miami Hurricanes lost the opener to Brigham Young, lost against Notre Dame by nine points. Two regular season losses for the first time since 1984. That's why Dennis Erickson feels this, a crucial ball game to his team's bold chances for New Year's Day. And the Panthers at 3-4-1, disappointing loss to Oklahoma in the margin of defeat. Uh, they were really upset by West Virginia, fail, falling by 14, and a uh, bit of a surprise, but Howard Schnellenberger's Louisville Cardinals stunned them by seven. That game was at Pittsburgh, and of course, they did score 15 points in the fourth quarter against the Fighting Irish last week. Wasn't enough. The common opponent there, Notre Dame. North, Notre Dame bested Miami in South Bend in a week ago. 
in Pittsburgh. Notre Dame went in and behind the rocket. Ishmael, they had a who had a tremendous evening against Pitt. Pitt played a pretty solid game against Notre Dame, but they were victimized by the big play, and that's been one of the problems Paul Hackett has had with his defense this year. Yeah, they've had problems stopping people on the ground. You look at the game time conditions, 81 degrees, pretty stiff breeze out of the Northeast. We did have about a half hour of rain prior to the ball game. It has cleared. Pittsburgh has had problems stopping people's running attack. 214 yards via the rush per game against them. Gave up 450 yards on the ground against Oklahoma. West Virginia ran for 378. And last week, the Irish, nearly 300 yards rushing against them. One would figure Miami would go to the ground game first. Certainly, Miami has made that observation as well. And I think you're going to see Miami early try to run right at the pit nose tackle. He is undersized, number 67. Derek Hicks, who's only 5'11 and 235 pounds. The Miami offensive coaches shared with us early on that they're going to test the middle of that pit defense. We just looked at 43-year-old Paul Hackett in his first full season as the head coach of the Panthers. He took over for Mike Gottfried just days before guiding the Panthers to a three-point win against Texas A&M last year in the John Hancock Bowl. Steve Israel back in twin safety formation with Ricky Turner. Carlos Huerta's kick taken by Israel at the 11. He gets to the 24. Maybe the 25, and they spot it just across the 25-yard line, where the Panthers will take over first down and 10 after a 12-yard kickoff return by number 11, Steve Israel. Alex Van Pelt will open at quarterback. The sophomore completing 60% of his throws. He's out of San Antonio, Texas. For 11 yards, Pittsburgh with the first... Kevin Williams, a freshman, opens for Kirvin Richards. DeVoe... A young fullback, Truett, his favorite receiver, Dave Moore, pretty good tight end, and Darnell Dickerson, former quarterback. Scott Miller, the best of the offensive linemen for Pitt. And Pelt with time on first down, has Orlando Truett. And Truett spinning up to the 38-yard line, and celebrating the catch, a pickup of 13 yards. 80. Orlando Truett out of Birmingham, Alabama. That's his 37th catch of the year. Yards, first and Anthony ten. Hamlet, Rusty Medeiros at the ends. Medeiros, big game last week. Maryland and Curry inside. The linebacking crew, Smith, Barrow, and Crum. Smith been coming on like gangbusters. In the secondary, Roland Smith and Robert Bailey, the corners. Darrell Williams and Charles Farms, the safeties. Farms going in place of the injury. Hurley Brown, who had arthroscopic surgery yesterday. On first set, on first down, the give us to Ricky Turner, junior out of Harrisburg, Number Pennsylvania, 35, starting Ricky for Kirvin Turner, Richards. Tackle by Maryland and Brown. Again, Russell Maryland in on the stop. Of course, Maryland a finalist for that Lombardi Award. Pitt lines up in three wide receiver, two back set, hand it to the tailback. You can see Shane Curry does a good job shedding his block, making the play right at the line of scrimmage for the Hurricanes. Lance Markle, the fullback, in the eye set. Truett and Dickerson to the right. Play fake, and down he goes. The sack for Miami's Rusty Medeiros, the redshirt freshman out of Ozark, Missouri, who had five and a half sacks last week against Texas Tech, quickly comes up with his first today. Medeiros picks up right where he left off last week in Lubbock, Texas. Top of your screen, you can see the outside charge. Swims underneath, and there's Medeiros coming down with Alex Van Pelt. Excellent pressure. The Miami defensive coaches hope they can get it done with a four-man rush today and not have to blitz. Just the second strike for the tenacious Rusty Medeiros. It brings up a third down and 17 for young Alex Van Pelt, the Pittsburgh Panthers. Here's the give. It's Glenn DeVoe. DeVoe comes left, goes down 40-yard line. Glenn DeVoe stopped by Michael Barron, assist from Darren Smith. And it will bring up a fourth down and nine after a pickup of eight yards. Miami forces Pittsburgh into a punting situation. And we will see the top punter in the country, Brian Greenfield, a senior from Sherman Oaks, California, averaging over 47 yards a punt, nine inside the 20. Eleven of his kicks have traveled better than 50 yards. There's a good look at Greenfield. On the other end will be Kevin Williams. He awaits at the 15. Ball hung up in the wind. Kevin Williams does not call for the fair catch. And there is a penalty marker down. He was hit. Williams gets across the 25 up near the 26-yard line. Greenfield hung it up for f over four seconds on the hang time. Coverage team must allow the punt receiver room to feel the ball. 
fairly confident this call is going to be interference and will be assessed against Pitt. Gutsy play by Kevin Williams. Charge was coming. He did not raise the hand for the fair catch on Greenfield's 45-yard punt. The preliminary indication... A week ago, the coaches made the change. Wesley Carroll came out as the punt returner. Kevin Williams in. Interference with the opportunity to catch. Five yards, the first down. That's our referee, Buddy Ward. Joe Pipkin, the linesman. Jim Campbell's the side judge. Bob Jamison, the back judge. Ron Clagus, the umpire. Paul Teague and John Daniels also on the crew. Not enough room to catch the ball. Have to allow him a yard. That was Vernon we'll Lewis. Catch. That interfered with a catch. On first down, penalty markers again as Craig Erickson McGuire handed it off to Steve Gary, McGuire. Penalty markers are down. McGuire, the sophomore running back out of Brooklyn, New York. Please report to the stadium manager's office. Wesley Carroll, Lamar Thomas. Please report to the stadium manager's And Randall Hill, the wideouts. Rob Chudzinski, the tight end. The illegal procedure against the Hurricanes will make it first down and 15. Leon Searcy, Mike Sullivan, the tackles. Lewis Cristobal and Claude Jones, the guards. Darren Handy will open at center for Miami. And by the way, for Sullivan, number 79 on the Hurricane line, his 44th consecutive start, just too shy of Miami's all-time record. So first down and 15 at their own 27. Scoreless ball game just underway. Nice catch by Wesley Carroll with the fingertips at the 31. Pushed out of bounds at the 32-yard line by the strong safety, Lewis Riddick. Wesley Carroll... There's a look at your starters. Erickson, 58% completions on the year. His top receiver is Wesley Carroll. There's the group up front. Leon Searcy and Claude Jones. They are a big-time strong side for the Hurricanes, and both underclassmen. That was a gain of seven. It's second down and eight for Miami. Leonard Conley comes in motion. The senior out of Tarpon Springs, Florida. Erickson quickly back into the pocket. Guns it deep for Carroll. Great catch at the pit 49-yard line. And he was really stuck by Doug Hetzler, the free safety. But an 18-yard hookup. Craig Erickson to Wesley Carroll, who is shook up. A gutsy catch by Wesley Carroll. Hetzler hit Wesley right in the ribs, right at the catch. Unbelievable that Wesley Carroll was able to hold on to the football. Tremendous concentra concentration. Craig Erickson does a good job of reading the coverage. Offensive line protects well. Watch the gun for Erickson, and Wesley comes down with it. Watch Hetzler on the impact. Right in the ribs. Great catch. Great concentration by Wesley Carroll, but he's still down on the field. As Andy Clary, the trainer for the Hurricanes, examines the Hurricane wide receiver. And we'll step aside here at the Orange Bowl. Just underway, 12.09 left first quarter. Miami and Pitt scoreless at the Orange Bowl. By the way, the Hurricanes have a couple of home football games remaining at the Orange Bowl, both against Big East foes. Two weeks from now, on the 17th of November, Jack Bicknell's Boston College Eagles come in for the first time since the famous Hale Flutie game of 1984. And one week later, on November 24th, it'll be Miami and the Orangemen of Syracuse in the final home game this season. For tickets to these games and all University of Miami sporting events, stop by the Heck Athletic Center, Ticketmaster, or call 1-800-GO-CANES. Now, Jim Wesley Carroll has made a living here at the University of Miami, catching passes over the middle. Sometimes you pay the price. He is mentally very tough. He is being administ administered to on the sideline right now, taking a little oxygen. I think we'll see Wesley back in the lineup this afternoon. Top of your screen, young and talented Horace Copeland, Lamar Thomas, and Darrell Spencer on first down. Erickson dumps it off complete. Alex Johnson. Johnson puts the Jets on, and he gets to the 40. Pickup of nine yards for Alex Johnson. Johnson, a senior out of Homestead, Florida, nicked up early and rounding in the form as we come down the home stretch. Keith Hamilton, the stud there, he's 6'7", 275, just a sophomore. Linebackers, a good group of four, especially on the left side where you see Prentice Wright and Ricardo McDonald. And in the secondary, the star is Lewis Riddick, the strong safety. Washington did some talking earlier in the week, called the UM receivers undisciplined. 
second down one for Miami in pit territory and Stephen McGuire comes up short of the first down big hit by Prentice Wright the inside McGuire. linebacker young man from Orlando Florida Mark Gunn number 90 defensive right end did a good job they had an angle charge to the hurricane strong side pit defensive line they angled right into the run and McGuire was knocked for a very short game two tight ends for Miami on third and one Thomas is to the top of your screen Randall Hill to the bottom and on third and one the give us to Alex Johnson he leaps for the first down AJ right over the top and Wesley Carroll reports back in running on over Randy Bethel AJ good job of going over top leaping he knows exactly where the yard marker is gets enough yardage for the first down and move the chain Followed a very nice block from number 70, Claude Jones, the 280-pound junior from Dillard High in Fort Lauderdale. First drive of the game for Miami. They have it first and 10 at the pit 38-yard line. Alex Johnson alone set that. Three receivers to the right. Erickson finds one, Lamar Thomas. And Thomas sneaks into the 32-yard line. In front of the linebacker, Craig Gow. Pickup of six for Lamar Thomas who had three catches last week in Lubbock, all three for touchdowns. Set a school record. Take a look at Erickson. Lamar just reads the zone, so does Erickson. He hooks up in the soft seam there. Great awareness by Lamar Thomas. Really has been a very pleasant surprise for the University of Miami. That's his 29th catch of the year after a 15-catch freshman campaign. Second down four, Erickson looking left, now right, throws it for the first down to Randall Hill, who makes the catch at the 25-yard line in front of the senior, Marcus Washington, seven-yard pickup. Miami hasn't had much problems moving the football on their opening drive. He looks left first, doesn't like what Lamar Thomas has, comes back to the far side of the field, and there's the safety valve, Randall Hill, running about a 13 or 14 yards. Look at the vision by Craig Erickson. Looks left, recocks. There's the rifle arm, and he hits Randall Hill right on the numbers. Good control route by Randall Hill. And, of course, Erickson with all the time he needed. Hill, Thomas, and Carroll to the left on first down. The give to Alex Johnson, and Johnson tripped up, gets to the 16-yard line. Saving stop there by the inside linebacker, number 46, yeah. Craig Gobb, leading tackler for the Panthers. Tremendous surge by the left side of the Hurricane offensive line. And Alex Johnson did a good job of stretching it, stretching it, stretching it. Then when he saw daylight, he planted the left leg and got upfield for a real solid gain on first down. Been a flawless first possession for Craig Erickson. All Hackett looking on. Erickson, the quarterback for Miami, has hit on all five of his passes for 47 yards. Erickson looking end zone bound for Hill. Is it for Randall? Touchdown! No, they say he landed out of bounds. I thought Randall got his back foot in. Tremendous job of protection by the offensive line. Craig Erickson has all kinds of time. It's a double zone. He scans the field. Now he's going to plant. He sees Randall. Let's take a look at it. Randall goes up high for it. What hits first? That hand hits on the goal line, on the end line. Clearly, the official made a good call. Can't he get. was beyond the end line of the end zone. Doesn't get much closer than that. Third down, a long yard for Miami at the Panthers 16. 820 left first quarter. Play fake to Johnson. Erickson looking has his tight end Chudzinski for the first down. Rob Chudzinski had six catches last week, including a 34-yard touchdown at Texas Tech. Picks up 10 yards, and Miami will have it first down and goal. Last two weeks, it's as, it's as if Craig Erickson has rediscovered his tight end. This is the naked bootleg, which was so effective a week ago. Fakes it to Alex Johnson, brings the linebackers in, reverses out. Chud is wide open in the flat, makes the catch, and gets upfield. Good, solid play in a possession situation. I like him using that tight end there. Good kid, Rob Chudzinski. Tremendous. 11th play of the drive for the Hurricanes. They have it first down and goal at the pit six. Nice cut back by Johnson. Gets inside the five down to the four-yard line. 
Craig Cobb, Derek Hicks, runner of tackle, and Lewis Riddick, along with Prentice Wright, all surrounding AJ. Miami brings in a couple of tight ends, along with Shannon Crowell, senior out of Atlanta, Georgia. This is where Miami has had trouble, punching it in. Green zone problems. One of Dennis Erickson's goals coming into this game was doing a better job in the green zone. Crowell in motion, 12th play of the drive. This is Leonard Conley sweeping left, gets near the end zone, but not in. To the one yard line goes Leonard Conley. That'll bring up a third and goal. Second tight end in the ball game, you can see him there, Randy Bethel. Walls off the left side. Conley just reads it. Ricardo McDonald made a solid play there for the Pitt Panthers, preventing a touchdown. McDonald's a good-looking linebacker, 6'2", 230 pounds, just a junior out of Patterson, New Jersey. Alex Johnson, the eye back. Crowell slot right on third and goal from the one. And here comes A.J. Diving in, he's got the touchdown. Miami scores on their first possession. Alex Johnson with his second touchdown of the year. play 68 yard drive taking five minutes and 21 seconds and Carlos Huerta will start to try to stay perfect on his point afters he's never missed and there's his 124th consecutive made PAT so Miami scores on their first possession seven minutes left opening quarter back with more at the Orange Bowl right after this Almost a flawless first possession for Miami resulting in Alex Johnson's one yard touchdown run Middle of the line, Lewis Cristobal, Darren handed Claude Jones. Good movement, good vision by A.J. Good awareness for where the goal line is. Makes the dive and gets the ball over the goal line. Take a look at it from the end zone. Look at the movement. Darren handy, the double team on the nose tackle. They fold it right in behind it. And again, Alex Johnson with a score for the Canes. 13 plays, 68 yards, over five minutes on the drive. Seven throws, six rushes, and Craig Erickson hits on six for seven for 57 yards. Would be seven for seven. Only incompletion was Randall Hill's catch just out of the end zone. And Carlos Huerta getting help from a stiff breeze blowing in the open end. That kick sails through the end zone, and the Panthers get it first down and 10 at their own 20-yard line. That kickoff, Eric, a good example of the frustration of Dave Arnold, the special team coach for the Hurricanes. Same spot, same wind direction. Previous one, he kicks it to the 16-yard line. This time, Carlos Huerta knocks it out of the end zone. Inconsistency has been a concern on the part of the coaches as it relates to the play of Carlos Huerta. Now, let's see what sophomore Alex Van Pelt comes up with. He's a San Antonio gunslinger. Set all sorts of records last year. He's in trouble on first down. And Belt doesn't mind tucking it in and doing this. And he scampers out at the 33-yard line. 13-yard pickup. Aaron Smith and Roland Smith running Van Pelt out of room, containing the quarterback right at the top of the hit list of Miami's defense. Absolutely, but Van Pelt is a very difficult guy to contain. He's the whole package. He's got the head as a, of a quarterback. He sees the whole field that time. He saw the Hurricanes were dropping deep off in coverage. He bought some time. And that's one of the real concerns for the Canes is the escapability of Alex Van Pelt, the pit QB. Three tight ends in the football game. I set behind the quarterback, Van Pelt. Dumps it off complete to the tight end, Lionel Sykes. And Sykes upended by Maurice Crum at the 36-yard line. Pick up of three yards. For the big tight end out of St. Louis, Missouri. Just the third catch this year for Sykes. Good look at Michael Barrow, the sophomore middle linebacker. Had 18 tackles a couple of weeks ago at Notre Dame. Van Pelt throwing it underneath. You're going to see Michael Barrow throw the umpire right on the ground trying to make the play. And he does make the play on the, on the pass underneath to the big pit tight end. One way to get even with the officials. Bottom of your picture, Darnell Dickerson. Top of your screen, Orlando Truitt. 
and Pelt's favorite targets. That's incomplete over the middle, intended for the tight end Dave Moore. Moore a favorite target as well of Van Pelt. Great, great pressure up the middle by the All-American Russell Maryland. Put a lick on Alex Van Pelt. As a freshman last year, Van Pelt broke Dan Marino's single season record, throwing for 2,881 yards. That's what he's done this year and already is the third best thrower in Pittsburgh history behind only Dan Marino and John Kinjemi. And he's only a sophomore. Third down, six. Ball caught by the fullback, Glenn DeVoe. And he will come up short. Needed six. DeVoe picked up four. Good, sure tackle by Darren Smith and Roland Smith. And that's not a very smart play by Glenn DeVoe. As a receiver, it's your obligation to know the down and distance and know how to get over that line to get a first down for your team. You never catch the football in front of the first down marker. Three downs and out, not going to get it done against these Miami Hurricanes. And for the second time this afternoon, we see the nation's leading punter, Brian Greenfield. A 45-yard boot first try. Freshman Kevin Williams waiting at his 12. Another fine-looking punt. Williams calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 13-yard line. Bank time of 4.6 seconds. And again, a very healthy boot by Greenfield. 46 yards on the punt. And Miami backed up at their own 13, leading 7-0 with 5 minutes and 8 seconds left in the first period. Awfully impressed by that kick, 46 yards into a wind here, tropical wind in Miami blowing directly out of the east. Craig Erickson, thrown for well over 2,000 yards on the year, 13 touchdowns, been intercepted five times. He'll start this drive with Leonard Conley behind him. And a rush coming. Keith Hamilton almost got him. Erickson running for some room and finds Leonard Conley. Conley goes up to the 37-yard line. Stopped there by Craig Gobb. 24 yards on the game. This is the Craig Erickson show. One of the things that really impresses you about Craig is his feet. Runs all the way to the right, throws across the field, and hits Leonard Conley right on the numbers for a 24-yard game. Craig Erickson is a big-time talent. We're going to be seeing him playing on Sunday afternoons for a long time. On first down, here comes Leonard Conley again. This time trying to sweep right, doesn't get much. Number 52, sophomore Heath Snell, the outside linebacker, first to get to Leonard. No game. Of course, this Pittsburgh team has been decimated injury-wise. The key injury to their tailback, Kervin Richards. They're also missing their starting inside linebacker, Nelson Walker, out with a knee injury. Sean Gilbert, starting defensive end, out and injured. And a couple of key backups for them. Been suspended for this football game. Second down, 10. Smelling blitz. Bringing him in. Crowell slot right. Blitz comes. Erickson finds Randy Bethel. And Bethel gets away from Lewis Riddick and goes up to the 46-yard line on the spin. Picked up with about seven yards. Good hard charge by Randy Bethel, the senior out of Vero Beach, Florida. Well, we've seen a couple things out of Craig Erickson this afternoon. The great escapability. Here we see him check out. Goes to his tight end on the hot route. Delivers the ball on the money. And watching Randy Bethel in motion is one of the fun things to do when you observe this Hurricane football team. Takes five Pitt Panthers to get the big tight end on the ground. That was number seven, Prentice Wright, on the ground, trying to knock Bethel down with his feet. Third down and two. Miami at their own 46. Three minutes left. First quarter. Conley with a juggling catch. Stays in bounds. Picks up the first down. And is off to the races. Dazzling bit of running by senior Leonard Conley, who is on this drive. Gets it down to the 22 yard line. Pick up of 32 yards. Miami is absolutely sawing apart this Pitt Panther defense. 
Here it's all Leonard Conley. That's about a one yard pass and maybe a 28 yard run. Look at Leonard Conley put the moves on and sprint upfield. A lot of people down on Leonard after the fumble, big fumble in the Notre Dame game. The coaches love this kid because of that kind of effort. Doug Hetzler finally brought him down well downfield with an assist from Marcus Washington, but Conley early ran right through the tackle of freshman Tinker Harris. From the pit 23 on first down, this one heading for Kevin Williams. The freshman makes the catch, keeps his feet, and zigzags his way inside the five down to the three. Pick up at 20, and Craig Erickson keeps dialing right numbers. <laughs> Greg Erickson is having a Heisman Trophy type afternoon. His receivers are helped piling up the yardage. Kevin Williams puts the juke step on. One thing you notice is the terrible tackling on the part of the Pitt Panthers this afternoon. And when you see that, you wonder if a team is at the right emotional pitch. This would be a big loss. Prentice Wright, their inside linebacker, very productive player for the Pitt Panthers. Wright is their third leading tackler. Began the year as their sixth man, so to speak, coming off the bench. He looks okay. By the way, injury report for the Hurricanes. Wesley Carroll taken into the locker room. He was experiencing some blurred vision. They do expect him to return. Down to two minutes, first quarter. Hurricanes leading 7-0, knocking again on first and goal inside the five. Oh, Erickson more, wide open. And right through his hands. Erickson had all, all the time he needed and was looking at Joe Moore all the way. But the junior at a poker at tone couldn't reel it in. Hurricanes were in the jumbo situation. Three tight ends in the lineup. You can see Joe Moore released at the bottom of the screen. He is wide open, and this ball was catchable. Shame on you, Joe. That's right through your hands. You don't get a lot of opportunities like that as a tight end, pal. Spoken like a former tight end, which Jim Mandich is. Greg Erickson this afternoon, 10 for 12, 140 yards. And both incompletions could very well have been caught. One was, but out of bounds in the end zone. Second and goal from the three. Here comes Leonard, eluding one man and getting to the two-yard line. Saving tackle by Craig Gobb, the inside linebacker, his brother Scott, a three-year starter as a Penn State linebacker. Leonard did a good job of making number 53, the inside linebacker, Charles Williams, miss. We expected a slow-moving game because of Pitt's propensity to air it out. Take a look at Conley. You see the miss. But there's God, quick close, makes the one-on-one -on -one tackle, a touchdown saving tackle. Third down, goal from the three. Erickson looking and has Randy Bethel for the touchdown Hurricanes. Randy Bethel's 41st catch of his career and his 10th touchdown. He has a nose for the end zone. There is a tight end who will not drop it when he is in the pay dirt. We've seen an incredible afternoon by Craig Erickson. Started last week against Texas Tech. I thought Craig was extremely sharp. But he is really slicing up this Pitt Panther team this afternoon. Where to switch the uprights. 14 nothing Miami with a minute left in the first quarter. That drive covers nine plays, 86 yards. Erickson to Bethel for the touchdown. Back with more first quarter action from the Orange Bowl in Miami right after this. Twitter just about over at the Orange Bowl, a minute left. Miami leading Pittsburgh 14 0 on two long and impressive touchdown drives. Speaking of, of impressive, the Miami Heat opened their NBA season on Friday night with a victory. And uh, exciting Miami Heat basketball will continue here on Sports Channel. The Bucks and the Miami Heat on the 6th of November at 7.30. On the 14th, the Mavericks and the Heat. And on the 16th, it's the Heat and the Indiana Pacers. All games begin at 7.30. Check your local listings for availability in your area. On Rothstein's Heat, getting off to a very impressive start, a 24-point win the other night against the Washington Bullets. 
It's been a dominant start for Craig Erickson and the Hurricane offense. The senior quarterback Erickson is connected on 11 of 13 for 142 yards and a touchdown. End over end to Steve Israel at the one. And Israel chopped down at the 20. Good coverage. Randy Bethel, who caught the touchdown pass, in on the stop, as was Darren Cryan, back up inside linebacker. Play action on the goal line. Tough as a linebacker not to bite on that. And Craig locates Bethel wide open on the far side of the field, and Randy gets the score. Look at the play. Look how it freezes the linebackers. There's Gobb taking it, and then Craig pulls it back out. And easy money. Kevin Williams, the guy back. The freshman gets the pitch. And he is really whacked by Robert Bailey, the right side corner. Senior only goes 175 pounds in 5'10", but through a quick roadblock at Kevin Williams, just a one-yard gain. One of the things the Hurricanes are able to do because of the great athletes they have on defense is rotate two cornerbacks up and drop both safeties to cover half the field. That gets your cornerbacks in a lot of support, and that time we saw Bailey just come in and put the nose right in the numbers like it's supposed to be done. Dickerson to the right, Orlando Truitt, wide side left, and Van Pelt on second down and eight, throws it incomplete. And Ricky Turner definitely heard Maurice Crum's heavy footsteps right behind him. I think the Pitt Panthers have heard a lot of footsteps out here this afternoon. Paul Hackett needs to get this Pitt Panther team fired up in a hurry because they're looking at another three and out right now. They can't afford to give the Hurricanes a football again in good field position with 14 seconds left in the first quarter. Well, last week against Notre Dame, Alex Van Pelt threw it 51 times. 37 completions, his best day as a Pitt Panther. He hasn't even come close to that here in the first period, which has 14 seconds left in it. Third and nine. And Van Pelt under a rush, fires complete. Tynell Dickerson, but wrapped up and brought down by Robert Bailey. That's the four-yard pickup. It'll be fourth down and four. Another three and out. And Pitt's going to have to kick into the wind as Miami wisely calls a timeout in this situation. And Miami, again, is going to get excellent field position. Eric, this hurricane defense, they made some switches inside. They put Shane Curry inside. Rusty Medeiros is now starting outside. And the last couple of weeks, you really see this unit gelling. Last week, you mentioned minus 10 yards rushing for Texas Tech, only 93 total yards. And Pitt on offense today has been able to accomplish, accomplish absolutely nothing. You really have the feeling that this hurricane defense is coming together. And Jim, this is without the outstanding outside linebacker, Jesse Armstead, recovering well from knee surgery. Dennis Erickson encouraged about that. And many other things as his club makes the turn down the stretch run. Dennis Erickson, 43 years old, a record of 16 and three at Miami in his second year. Former quarterback at Montana State, innovative offensive coach. Now, so far, the highlight player for Pittsburgh has been their punter. Ryan Greenfield came in with an average of 47 yards a punt and has been right there so far today in his first two. They flank Vernon Lewis to the right, Glenn DeVoe to the left. Pittsburgh comes up with some offbeat formations on their special teams. particularly good effort there by Greenfield short bouncing well for Miami and back to the Hurricane 40 yard line and that does it for our first quarter dominant first period at the Orange Bowl for the Hurricanes looking for their 34th consecutive regular season victory at home easy pickings first period back for the second right after this With Jim Mandich and our crew at the Orange Bowl, I'm Eric Reed. Delighted to welcome you to University of Miami football, wherever you tune in the Hurricanes here on Sports Channel. An Alex Johnson one-yard touchdown run on their opening drive. A Craig Erickson three-yard scoring pass to Randy Bethel on a 13-play long scoring drive for the Hurricanes and a dominant period offensively and defensively for Dennis Erickson's group. Miami has dominated every phase of the game. Special teams on defense. They've been swarming. 
Pittsburgh essentially three and out in each of their series in the first quarter, and then Miami offensively put together two drives successfully for touchdowns, and that puts them on top at this point, 14 to zip. Greg Erickson unofficially first quarter, 11 for 13, 142 yards through the air. And around coming to Randall Hill. And Hill does not get away from Ricardo McDonald, the big Randall and rangy Hill junior outside Hill. linebacker. McDonald, pretty McDonald, special player. Number 48 makes the stop. Miami offensive coaches identified him as the best player on the pit defense. Here's Randall on the reverse. Nobody faked out on the pit team here. You're going to see Ricardo McDonald make a great one-on-one -on -one tackle. And that play, designed to be a big gainer, comes up with a two-yard loss. Ben brings up second down and 12. Hill comes right in the slot, Wesley Carroll. And to the top is Lamar Thomas. On setback, Alex Johnson McGuire. The fumbled snap from center Craig Erickson, and Pittsburgh has recovered. Picking up the loose football, Jake Bleacher back up nose tackle. Erickson never got it from Darren Handy. Exactly. Darren Handy made a double clutch on it. Got it about halfway up. Craig was drawing out. And you see Bleacher, Bleacher right there to jump on it for Pitt. And perhaps this will be the spark that the Panthers need to get them back into this ballgame. They haven't even picked up a first down yet. But Bleacher, maybe the easiest fumble recovery of his career. Just fell down, landed on the football. Christmas came early for Jake Bleacher. Darnell Dickerson at the bottom of your picture. Tight side formation with Orlando Truitt up top. And on first down, Van Pelt drops deep and fires complete to Clem DeVoe. And there is a penalty marker in the backfield. DeVoe inside the Miami 30 where he draws a crowd. Aaron Smith and Maurice Crum stopping DeVoe. And the penalty looks to be against the Panthers. When the line judge throws the flag in that vicinity, very little question what the call is going to be. Holding on the Pitt Panther offensive line. They got to come up with some way to contain Rusty Medeiros. Holding against Pittsburgh, 10 yard penalty, first down. Ball spotted back at the 46-yard line. It'll be first down and 20 for Pitt. They have picked up to this point two first downs. Alex Van Pelt with Glenn DeVoe behind him sends three receivers to the right. Arnell Dickerson, Orlando Truitt, and Ricky Turner, and they give it to Glenn DeVoe. And DeVoe doesn't get much for the 44-yard line, just a pickup of two. Aaron Smith and Maurice Crum, two very active linebackers for Miami, pinching in on DeVoe. Darren Smith is playing sensational football right now, now from the strong linebacker position. Watch him react, makes the hit, playing tremendous football for the Canes. He had 17 hits against Notre Dame last week against Texas Tech. Darren Smith had two sacks. Quite a football player, number 45, Darren Smith. Second down, 19 for Pitt. At the Miami 44, and they trail it by two touchdowns. Van Pelt angles it and completes it to Dave Moore. Just in front of Michael Barrow, and Moore turns it upfield and gets inside the 35 down to the 34-yard line. A pickup of 10. Against a 4-3 defense, the pressure point becomes the middle linebacker. A lot of pressure on him. Here, Pitt is able to isolate their tight end on Michael Barrow. Moore does a great job of beating Barrow on the one-on-one. -on -one and coming up with one of the more positive plays for the Panthers. Panthers. David Moore came into the game with 25 catches. He's a junior from Landing, New Jersey. Had a big eight-catch evening against Notre Dame last Saturday in Pittsburgh. Third down, nine for the Panthers. They are at the Miami 34-yard line, and a deep drop for Van Pelt, who fires incomplete to Darnell Dickerson. And Maurice Crum draped all over his back. Miami gets a break there, Jim. No question. Looked like interference to me. Maurice Crum was on Darnell Dickerson like a suit. Take a look at it. Van Pelt trying to go to his big rangy wide receiver, Darnell Dickerson. Take a look. Looked like Crum, Crum was over with that left arm. Darnell Dickerson pointing. Looking for the interference call not to be. 
Well, Dickerson had nine catches against Notre Dame, including a gorgeous leaping touchdown grab over the All-American Todd Light. And on fourth down and nine, the old quick kick. Yes. This will come from Scott Stark, backup quarterback, looking for new records hang time-wise. And that's nicely done as it is downed at the eight-yard line by Chris Boyer. So the quick kick, although it does come on fourth down, pins Miami back inside their own 10. 12 minutes left, second quarter. Hurricanes lead it by two touchdowns. 14-0 Miami, 12 minutes, 8 seconds left in the second quarter here at the Orange Bowl, where that last turnover did not cost the Hurricanes. They have outgained the Panthers decisively, 153-54. to And that last punt by Stark, a hang time of nearly 6 seconds. He put it straight up. I think the story there, Pitt unable to capitalize on the turnover and Miami's defense responding to the quick change of possession and denying Pitt any opportunity to score. Yeah, Craig Erickson in the game against Pittsburgh last year went 18 for 39. In the first quarter alone, Erickson completes 11 of 13. He's got Alex Johnson behind him, and Johnson, who had the one-yard touchdown earlier, goes straight ahead to the 14-yard line. A pickup of six on first down. Miami three-pronged to tailback. Johnson, Conley, McGuire. And Alex Johnson brings that explosiveness from the end zone. Look at Lewis Cristobal. Zone block, good movement right behind Darren Handy, the center. Nice opening. That's how you draw it up. Greg Erickson, five games over 300 yards passing this year, two in a row. And gets Lamar Thomas. Nice move by Lusoff Moore. finally brought down by Marcus Washington. Well, that's before he gets into Panther territory at the 47-yard line. Simple pattern, but the cutback by Thomas, and he rings the register for 40 yards. Miami's receivers have done a sensational job of catching the so short pass and getting yardage after the catch. Quick O-cut, seven-yard O-cut. Lamar makes the catch, and he makes the cornerback Washington miss. Washington's going to get back up and get it, get into this play, catches Lamar from behind, but not before a big positive gain and a first down for Miami. Thomas giving you some of the reasons why he averages over 18 yards a catch. On first down, Craig Erickson having so much fun, he's going to try it again. Well, had a notion to go for Randy Bethel. Instead, he tiptoes to the 40-yard line. Six-yard gain for Craig Erickson, second down and four. Not a real good decision by Craig Erickson that time. He was looking to push it downfield to Wesley Carroll. He had his tight end, Randy Bethel, wide open in the flat. By the time he reacted and recocked, tried to go back to Bethel, he was covered. But it's tough to complain when you gain six yards on first down. Boris Copeland, Kevin Williams, and Darrell Spencer all flanked to the wide side. Alex Johnson gets it, and he swings it left and has big running room. Johnson gets down to the 30-yard line. Ten-yard pickup for Johnson. First down, Miami. Charles Williams, a freshman linebacker out of Philadelphia, finally upending Alex Johnson, who is having a very productive first half. This Miami team has really come together the last two weeks. And here we watch this game, and... Pitt appears to be inept or incapable of stopping Miami offensively. Alex Johnson so far, first half, six carries, 28 yards, and a touchdown. From the Pitt 31, first and 10, going deep for Randall Hill. Touchdown, Miami! reception for Randall Hill was second of his senior year 31 yards on a rope from Craig Erickson that was the 38th career touchdown tossed by Erickson just too shy of Bernie Kosar for third place on the Miami all-time touchdown list 
Carlos Huerta's third point after, like the previous two, and like the previous 125. Five plays, 92 yards in less than two minutes, and with 10-17 still to go, second quarter, 21-0 Hurricanes. People look at me kind of uh, with one eyebrow raised when I say I think Miami is the best football team in the country, but indeed, that's my impression. And when you see them go up against a Pitt Panther team that's a pretty uh, pretty solid football team, offensively and defensively, stop them the way they do and then move the football so effortlessly, five plays, 92 yards, get it in the end zone. They're playing as good, the Miami Hurricanes, as anybody in the country right now. They ranked in eighth. They are playing more powerfully than that. And Pitt has got to be demoralized. You back a team up inside their 10 and then give up seven points. Not good. Where does kick sails out of bounds? And he'll have to do it again. I'll tell you who's been very good. Craig Erickson. How about these numbers, Jim? 13 for 15, 213 yards, couple of touchdowns. And, and he's been complete today on the touchdown. You saw him recognize blitz, and Pittsburgh didn't do a very good job defensively because it was very easy to read the pre-snap that they were lining up in a blitz. Perhaps we'll have an opportunity to look at it here. Craig is checking. You see him move his back to get the blitz pickup, and Randall's just one-on-one. -on -one. Craig's licking his chops right now. He throws it up, and Randall Hill on the fade pattern simply runs up underneath it for the quick six. That's easy money. Easy money. You can't do that with Craig Erickson. When you're pit, you've got to disguise your coverages and you've got to disguise the blitz. If he see, gets the idea that you're blitzing pre-snap, he can adjust his backs. He gets the message out to the wide receivers. Those guys are going one and one on the cornerbacks. They're going to come up with a lot of big plays on any given afternoon. Big play there turned in by Thrill Hill. Fastest player on the Hurricanes. Blue pass the corner, Dave Coleman. So Craig Erickson with 39 touchdown passes, nearly 5,000 yards. He's done it pretty much in a year and a half of play. After backing up Steve Walsh, it's been the Erickson show last two falls here in Carl Gables. Well, pitch back to Steve Israel from Dave Moore, and Israel straight ahead across the 35 to the 36. 10-10 left second quarter. Been all Hurricanes. They lead it 21 to nothing. Well, we mentioned somewhat demoralizing when a team goes 92 yards on you, especially when it takes but five plays in a minute and 51. Well, Pitt's first four possessions. It's now time for the Pitt Panthers, Eric. Got to get something going on this series or they can fold it up and Miami can start getting ready a bunch of freshmen and sophomores. They've only been able to run off 14 plays in four possessions. Here comes Ricky Turner off right tackle. And Turner, a junior, gets to the 40-yard line, a pickup of four yards. Now Pittsburgh has got to pick up some first downs and keep the Miami offense off the field to get this thing turned around. If you didn't look at the scoreboard right now, and you just looked at the surge offensively and defensively, it's all happening on the pit side of the ball there. Runner right there, lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage and scratch out a yard or two. But Miami is upfield on defense and downfield on offense. Three receivers come wide side left for Alex Van Pelt. Looking up top for Orlando Truitt. Nearly a splendid catch turned in at the 32-yard line. Harold Williams, excellent young free safety for Miami, went slipping, nearly landed underneath the stands. He had Truitt covered well. When you start pointing to the who, of this Miami defense and who's really getting it done. Darrell Williams. Here's Van Pelt, little waggle pass trying to get outside of the pocket. It sails on him with a win. Look at Darrell Williams, number 31, breaking on the ball and knocking the pass out of Truett's hands. Darrell Williams, homegrown, a sophomore out of American High School in Miami. And he is a big time talent. 9.22 remaining second quarter. Hurricanes ahead, 21 zip, third and seven for Pitt. And Van Pelt again for Truett. Truett can't bring it in. That time it was the strong safety from Houston, Texas, Charles Farms, dislodging the ball from the hands of Truett. And if it's not Darrell Williams, it's the other safety. Charles Farms. Van Pelt not getting much done through the air this afternoon. You see the five and nine, but for only 37 yards. 
Another possession that does not garner Pitt a first down. Brian Greenfield for the fifth time already. Check it, this is his fourth punt. And now the win at his back. He'll angle it to Kevin Williams. He nailed it. That's a great looking kick. And that's going to be a foolish penalty by Vernon Lewis of Pittsburgh. Williams had signaled fair catch. Lewis plowed over him. Second time Lewis has been guilty of the same type of infraction. And Pitt right now looks to be a, a very lethargic football team. They're, they're not getting it done aggressively either on offense and defense. And you see that kind of play is just an absent-minded, non-thinking kind of football play. This Pitt Panther team may have left their game back at the college campus in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hurricanes lead it by three touchdowns, 8.57 left, second quarter. Jim Mandich, yours truly, Eric Reed, will be back to the Orange Bowl right after this. Greenfield of Pittsburgh is the nation's premier punter. He is looked at today. Of course, he's had plenty of work. At last boot, went 61 yards. Jim, it went into the end zone, so it would have come out to the 20. But comes out to the 20, and then, because of the interference call, the hit on the uh, Hurricane punt receiver, 15 yards marked off against the Pitt Panther, so Miami has possession at the 35-yard line. By the way, Miami's starting running back, Stephen McGuire, has aggravated a groin pull injury and will only play if needed. Right now, it's Leonard Conley as the lone setback on first down. And Conley upended. Nice play there by the nose tackle, Derek Hill. So 5'11", 215-pound sophomore out of Detroit. Stopped by 67, Just a one-yard pickup for Conley. Hicks is undersized, 5'11", 235 at the nose tackle position. And we've seen the Hurricanes, the brunt of their offensive running attack today, going right up the middle at the nose tackle. Wesley Carroll has returned to the ball game for Miami. He is in the slot right. As you see Conley going in motion. On second down, a little more than eight. Erickson has Conley, still has him. And Conley not through yet, picks up the first down, gets in the pit territory. Well, Leonard Conley had to wait a while for it, but advances to the Pittsburgh 49-yard line. That's a gain of 14 for Conley. Best friend of a quarterback is a receiver who can run after the catch. Craig Erickson has a handful of those. On this one, it's Leonard Conley. There's one tackle that misses. There's a good block, and the receivers do a good job of blocking for one another. Conley upfield. Good game. Tinker Harris ran him out of bounds. Look at the numbers for Erickson. Has missed on just two of his 16 passes. Near perfect. 224 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Looking for more, and he has the talented Horace Copeland, who juts in with a 38-yard line. A pickup of 11 for Copeland. Copeland, a 6'3 sophomore from Orlando. That's just the third catch of the year for Horace. He is a multi-talented athlete. Erickson gets it out to Horace Copeland on the O-cut. Good strong arm, good catch. Good maneuverability by Horace Copeland, and he dives upfield for a couple of additional yards. Miami's desperately been to, to trying to get Horace Copeland involved in the passing game. They recognize his enormous potential. Copeland very tall and very talented. Erickson again with loads of time. This one complete to Randall Hill at the 29-yard line, just inside the 30. Make up of nearly nine yards. And Erickson is now 16 for 18. Eric, do you get the impression that they might be in the backyard playing a little pitch and catch right now? It doesn't make any difference what receiver. It doesn't make any difference if he's looking right or left or if he's scrambling. The bottom line is a reception for the Hurricane. Craig Erickson really putting the ball on the money with great accuracy today. And he's had all day to look around. Great protection by the five in front. Nobody's gotten close to Craig Erickson. We're in the pit, yellow and gold. Here's Conley eluding a man line of scrimmage and slipping down at the 27-yard line. Slip right in front of Lewis Riddick. 
but eluded the tackle of Ricardo McDonald line of scrimmage. Stop made by five, Lewis Riddick. Timeout for measurement. That'll be close to a first down. They'll bring in the sticks. Miami's done everything they've wanted to do so far. 21 zip the score, 646 left, second quarter. Been the men against the boys thus far this afternoon. Pitt unable to do anything offensively, smothered by the Miami defense. And Miami, outside of the one fumble, when they stopped themselves, Pitt has been totally frustrated in their efforts to contain the Miami offense. Third down and one. Conley just short of the first down. It'll be third less than a yard. They're calling it one, but the chains indicate that the Hurricanes are looking for about six inches in this third down situation. Hill to the top. In the slot right, Wesley Carroll. To the wide side is Lamar Thomas. And the give is Alex Johnson's, and he should have enough. You now Pitt has been pedestrian offensively, close to inept defensively. Miami has moved at will. There was no gain on the play. Well, they say no gain. It'll be fourth down and short for Miami. The most suspenseful moment in the game thus far this afternoon. Great play that time by the left end. The enormous number 92, Keith Hamilton, 6'7", 275 for the Pitt Panthers. And he has been very quiet so far this afternoon, but Hamilton a big timer. Today, his 19th start, he has already registered 18 sacks. Johnson runs right into Hamilton, but does pick up the first down. Hamilton wears number 92. Alex Johnson shot past him for the first down pickup. And even six minutes in the second quarter remain. 21-0 Miami. And Alex Johnson, one-yard touchdown run. A couple of Greg Erickson touchdown throws. Three yards to Randy Bethel, 31 yards to Randall Hill. Here's Hamilton, just a sophomore out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Talented athlete, he averaged 26 points a game as a high school basketball player and received several scholarship offers for hoops. Erickson again with loads of time, incomplete but in the team. Marcus Washington over the back of Lamar Thomas down at the five-yard line. And they're going to call off the flag that you see laying on the ground. Penalty markers back at the 22 where some extracurriculars are taking place. Take a look at it. Does Washington come over the top? Awfully close. They're saying no interference, although there's another flag down at the line of scrimmage. The men in stripes all from the Southern Independent Collegiate Officials Association. This is Buddy Ward, the referee. Interference against Pittsburgh. Be a first down. We've got dead ball. Personal foul against Pittsburgh. Dead ball. Personal foul against Miami. We've got ejection. Apparently, while you heard the official, we have an eject ejection, and we will look to the sideline. There's Paul Hackett, former NFL assistant with Cleveland, San Francisco, and Dallas. A disciple of Bill Walsh. There's, of course, Dennis Erickson, both former college quarterbacks and both eager to find out who and why in terms of the ejections. Both coaches three or four steps onto the field. Erickson. quarterback Craig Erickson having a tremendous day and the head coach of the Hurricanes Dennis Erickson what's going on out there Craig Jim how is Dennis and his staff held up two regular season losses for most clubs that's no problem here in Coral Gables for the University of Miami that's big news they haven't lost two in the regular season since 1984 Dennis Erickson is a very positive, look-ahead guy. After the loss, everybody was devastated. 
brought all the coaches in the next morning. They had a little huddle, and he said, I'm proud of all you guys. I'm proud of the way you're working, and we're going to get it done here. And I think that sums it up. He's a guy who's got blinders on, and he looks ahead. Personal foul, 15 yards, be first down. Initiating crew playing ping pong with the placement of that football. Back and forth they go. Essentially, an offsetting foul on the uh, dual assessed double foul there, both against Miami and the Pitt Panthers. So Miami re retains possession. We'll put it in play from the 21-yard line. We were talking about Dennis Erickson and his staff, and let's hear again from Buddy Ward. Well, Buddy was poised to deliver a message. Is it me, or, or does it seem like officials at every level, college and pro, this year have really been struggling with the call? Yeah, buddy coming over to chat with Dennis Erickson. They have still had a hard time to determine who was ejected. Well, you saw the thumb call, so you know Dennis had somebody ejected. There's Sebastian the Ibis. I believe for Pitt, it has been number 90, Mark Gunn, who was sitting on the bench on the far sideline. Normally a starter at that right end position. He's out of the game. There is Mark Gunn, a senior out of Cleveland, Ohio, former junior college player in California. Here are some score updates. You can look, by, look at the look on his face. In the fourth quarter. See, he's not too pleased. So we determine who was tossed for Pittsburgh. They'll try to find out who got the heave hole for Miami. Might be Mike Sullivan. Looks like it is Sullivan, number 79, sitting on the end of the hurricane bench. The gentle giant, Mike Sullivan, got himself involved in some extracurricular activities. He's out of the ball game. Sullivan has been replaced by number 72, sophomore Mario Cristobal. Back to the action finally. And what else is new? Another completion. Erickson to Thomas will fumble after the whistle. Lamar Thomas downed at the 13-yard line. Pick up of eight yards. So finally back to football. By the way, number 45, Doug Whaley, a freshman, has replaced Mark Gunn at right end. And there's Sullivan, who started for the 44th straight game at the weak side tackle. Tolbert Bain holds the Miami record with 46 consecutive starts. And Sullivan has battled through all sorts of physical ailments heading toward that record. Second down and two for the Hurricanes at the pit 13. A. Frank Miami leading by the score of 21-0. In a clinic to this point. And getting a little ugly on this drive. Penalty markers down. McDonald with a late whack at Craig Erickson. And the flag oh, is on the far side of the eight-yard line. Miami. Delay a game against the Hurricanes. Game has gotten a little sloppy with 4.37 left in the second quarter. Under ordinary circumstances, you lose Mike Sullivan, you'd be off like concerned if you were the Hurricanes right now. But the Hurricanes sitting on a very comfortable 21-point lead and the ball deep in pit territory. Second down now and goal to go for Miami, even though the football is back at the 18-yard line. And on the run gets rid of it and just in the nick of time and now another penalty marker down Whaley intentionally grounding it is intentionally grounding officials are quick on the trigger out here this afternoon no hesitation in that call Doug Whaley and Joe Conlon close quickly on Craig Erickson you see Craig going down and just throws it in the flat and you will not see an orange jersey anywhere in that vicinity and the official quick to throw the flag for intentionally grounding the football. And that'll bring up a third and goal from the pit 31. 4-12 left in the second quarter. 
Greg Erickson, 17 for 19. 255 yards, two touchdowns. Lone setback, Leonard Conley. Thomas Wright, Wesley Carroll, and Randall Hill to the left. Mark Conley walks up to a slot left. And Erickson back and looking. And firing for the end zone, battled away. Nice defense. Corner of the end zone by Marcus Washington. Ball thrown at Lamar Thomas. And that'll bring up a fourth and goal from the 31. Call for Carlos Huerta and a field goal. Craig checks off. He thinks he's getting a blitz. This is the best that uh, Pitt has done, disguising their coverages. Tries to get into the corner of the end zone, but Washington, as you said, makes a great play defending against Lamar Thomas. This will be a 48-yard attempt for Huerta. It is on the way, and it is good. Carlos Huerta from 48 yards. His 10th field goal of the year and his 49th career three-pointer. So 3.56 left in the second quarter. Miami extends its lead to 24-0. It's been all Miami thus far. Pitt totally inept on offense. Alex Van Pelt, who was Miami's concern going into the ball game, the great quarterback, number 10 for the Pitt Panthers, has not been able to accomplish much against the swarming Miami defense. And Craig Erickson can't recall a day or an afternoon here at the Orange Bowl when he has ever been sharper. And he has just sliced up the Pitt Panthers this afternoon. And Carlos Huerta, junior from Coral Gables, local product for Miami. Inside, 49 yards, he is at 25 of 31 field goals. That was a 12-play, 54-yard drive for Miami. Your attention, please, Jim Hartman. And the distance for Huerta, 48 yards. You always want to play well with an open week ahead. Miami has done that here in the first half. Miami is right in the midst of a Big East swing. And over the next couple of weeks, they will play. Today is Pitt by Syracuse and Boston Conference. So that mini football conference, we're getting our first taste of it this year in Miami. Big East football has a nice ring to it. Pitt will start at their own 24-yard line. Ricky Turner on the return. Darren Cryan on the special team stop, along with number 29, Casey Greer. Well, Sam Jankovic, engineering, one of the great moves of the decade in college athletics, getting the University of Miami into the monster Big East Conference. And, of course, Big East Commissioner Mike Trangisi making the bold step forward to keep his football schools happy, Pitt, B.C., and Syracuse, and giving new life to a basketball program that has struggled, and now with the opportunity, Leonard Hamilton can thrive and every team in the Big East Conference, Jim, has had an opportunity to play for a national championship or at least compete at that caliber. No reason to think it'll be any different for Miami. Well, if ever there was a win-win situation, this was it. Miami mates well with the Big East, and of course, Miami brings to the Big East great prestige, particularly the recognition of its national football uh, program. Of course, they are still to fine-tune the details of which way they'll go with a football alignment. We'll hear Jim Mandich's thoughts as our football afternoon turns to evening here at the Orange Bowl. On first down, Van Pelt looking downfield and finding Orlando Truitt at midfield. Truitt into Miami territory at the 49-yard line, brought down by Charles Farms. Truitt's a good-looking receiver. Picked up 28 yards on first down. Good play here by Pitt. This is the X square in, the split squaring in. They influence the middle linebacker, suck Michael Barrow up, hit the deep square in behind him, and between the two safeties, Farms and Williams. Lone setback, Ricky Turner, good seven yards behind Van Pelt. He gets the call, gets away from Shane Curry, but doesn't get much, just a yard to the 49-yard line. Number 97, Anthony Hamlet. Number 56, middle linebacker Michael Barrow on the stop of Turner. We're down to three minutes left in the second quarter. Carlos Huerta 
Well, three extra points and a three-pointer from deep. 24-0 Hurricanes. Arnell Dickerson been shut out so far this afternoon. Comes wide left. Truitt and Turner in the slot. Van Pelt lobs it for Truitt. He makes the catch. There is a marker down as Truitt gets to the 26-yard line. Darrell Williams and Charles Farms book in Truitt and bring him down. Williams and Farms defended for Miami. We'll wait and see the call. If it stands, it's a 22-yard gain. Interference against the offense, Pittsburgh. That was on Orlando Truitt on the push-off as he was trying to run the post-corner route. Pushed off Charles Farms in support. You see Van Pelt pushing it downfield. There's a reason Truitt comes wide open. He had pushed off Charles Farms. Farms knows he's going to get this call. Nothing seems to be going right for the Pitt Panthers this afternoon. They self-destruct on that completion. There was another call at the line of scrimmage. Not only the infraction for the offensive interference, but a loss of down for Pitt. This has been a nightmare first half for Paul Hackett and his Panthers, and they take a timeout with 2.32 left in the second quarter. There's Paul Hackett. Former quarterback at Cal Davis. He went there as a pre-med student. His father, a former Harvard professor of biochemistry. And this is definitely a thinking man's football coach. He's going to have to come up with quite the plan at halftime because his team has been outdueled in every aspect. But Paul Hackett, bright young coach, first full year at the age of 43. By the way, more Miami Hurricane football action and sports action on Sports Channel. Boston College's Eagles come in November 18th. You'll see it at 8 p.m. And on November, uh, November 23rd, Leonard Hamilton's Hurricane basketball program against George Mason. And of course, you can join us every Saturday at 4 for Hurricane football with head coach Dennis Erickson. Check local listings for availability in your area. There you see Paul Hackett again. You mentioned the cerebral Paul Hackett. His dad was a Ph.D. from Harvard. And he prides himself as being a teacher and a good student as well. And he was mentored by one of the great coaches in professional football, a couple of the great coaches in professional football, Tom Landry, but really considers himself a Bill Walsh disciple. Also spent five years at the University of Southern California understudying John Robinson. And he comes with a reputation as being a genius in understanding and putting together the passing game. Early on in the career of Paul Hackett, he was an offensive coordinator at Cal when they had three offensive stars by the name of Steve Bartkowski, Chuck Muncie, and Wesley Walker. He's been around some great ones. It was unusual. Mike Gottfried fired just a couple of weeks before the John Hancock Bowl a year ago. A kind of peculiar situation. Gottfried enjoyed a lot of success at Pitt last year, and some have criticized perhaps uh, Paul Hackett for undermining the guy who indeed had hired him to be his offensive coordinator at Pitt. Well, Pitt really had it going in the 70s. Johnny Major's national championship year in 76, then Jackie Sherrill with three straight 11-1 campaigns. Here it is, third and 23. Ball deflected line of scrimmage on the Van Pelt toss. He was looking down the middle for Darnell Dickerson. Darnell Dickerson, excuse me. Big rush by Crum. And Russell Merrill in the Lombardi candidate. Got a piece of it. A lot of pressure. Rusty Medeiros doing a good job. Russell Merrill. He is, to me, the only legitimate candidate for the Outland Trophy Award, the best lineman in the country. Not only does he have great ability, he makes, he's one of those players that makes everybody around him play better. Last year it was Cortez Kennedy. This year it's Shane Curry. He is an absolute role model for what you want in a college student athlete. He has already graduated working on his master's degree in psychology. The nickname for Russell Maryland, the conscience. Line drive and spiraling for Greenfield. Williams backs up, takes a look. It is down at the 23-yard line. Miami will take over, leading 24 to nothing with 2.15 left in the second quarter. A 40-yard punt for Greenfield. 
Now, oh, speaking of the Lombardi Award, in which Maryland is a finalist for, going against Chris Zorich in Notre Dame, Mo Gartner from Illinois, and Auburn's David Rocker. Zorich out with a knee injury, may not play again for the Fighting Irish this year. Competition looks to come from the Fighting Illini nose tackle. Nice catch by Lamar Thomas. Up at the 30, nine yard pickup on first half. Yeah. What a first half it's been for Craig Erickson. It's been pitch and catch. Makes it look almost effortless. The game is nine yards. Rarely a miss for Erickson. Bold numbers for Miami here on a breezy, overcast late afternoon in November at the Orange Bowl. Very instructional opportunity here for the Canes with two minutes left. How do they run their two minute offense? Second, short. Here comes Leonard Conley, turns it up, picks up the first down at the 35-yard line. Conley Stopped down the play by Joe Conlon, number 26. The line. First down for the Hurricanes. Pick they hustle back line of scrimmage. Clock momentarily stopped at 2.04. They rev it back up. Carroll, nice blocking line of scrimmage, enabling Erickson the fire complete to Rob Chudzinski up at the 43. An eight-yard hookup. Great observation, Eric. Craig Erickson pulled Wesley Carroll in, and Wesley did nothing less than take on Ricardo McDonald, 6'2", 235. Look at him blocking there. Gives Craig Erickson enough time to make that completion to Rob Chudzinski. Crowd reacting to the PA announcement that Georgia Tech is ahead of Virginia. Cavaliers ranked number one in the country. Minute 53 left till halftime. Hurricanes leading by 24 to nothing. Here comes Conley. Big room right side. And Leonard Conley with sprinter speed down to the 37-yard line. A saving tackle by the strong safety, Lewis Riddick. All the way down to the 43-yard line in pit territory. A 20-yard gain. You want to talk about how you draw them up on the chalkboard. Miami literally splattered the pit defense that time, knocked the entire support on the left-hand side of the pit. It's the counter trap. You can see the Cristobal brothers. There's a couple of hits. There's another hit by Louis Cristobal. Everybody's on the ground, and Leonard Connolly blasts upfield. Mario Cristobal really did a job on Craig Cobb. Chopped him down right at the shins. I'll tell you what, Claude Jones and Leon Searcy, that strong side of the offensive line, boy, they do a hammer job. Clock winding down, minute 35 left in the half. Great grab by Randall Hill. Boy, you talk about soft hands. Randall with a brief celebratory gesture after a nifty grab takes him down to the 27-yard line, a 10-yard pickup. And the important thing, he gets out of bounds, but even more importantly, he makes the catch. And watch this waltz on the sideline. And yes, he did have one foot in bounds. And the official right there. Great execution by the quarterback and the wide receiver, Rander Hill. Unofficially, the quarterback is 20 out of 23. Big hole for Leonard Conley. And he weaves his way inside the 10, heading for the flag. Touchdown, Miami! A gorgeous 27-yard weave for the end zone for little Leonard Conley. And the Hurricanes bring the tote board again. Boy, that was some highlight work for Leonard Conley. You tell me this isn't the best football team in the country this afternoon after watching... 30 minutes of total domination or just one of the finer programs in Division I college football. They have annihilated this pit team and demoralized them in less than a half of play. Wherefore nails up another point after touchdown and with a minute 23 left. Miami's impressive first half. Those are the numbers. 31 to nothing. This team has played superb football since the loss at Notre Dame. Draw play. Pitt over pursues. Connolly sees the daylight. Little shake and bake here. Makes Lewis Riddick miss. And then it's a sprint to the end zone. And he beats Terry, uh, Ricardo Harris easily to the corner of the zone. See it from ground level. 
to see the offensive line opening that hole. We can see the burst by Conley. Straightens up, back outside. That's how you always get your yardage. And Ricardo Harris doesn't have the burners to catch up with Leonard Conley. Six point is 77 yards for the Hurricanes. And Leonard Conley, underrated, not overlooked. Some people have griped on his fumbles, but Leonard Conley, Jim, third leading rusher in the history of the University of Miami, over 1,800 yards. Only Otis Anderson and Alonzo Highsmith have rushed it for more yardage than Leonard Hamilton. Excuse me, Leonard Conley. I think when, I, when, you, when you say Leonard Conley, I think of a couple things. Productive. He's a very productive back, and he is a 100% effort guy. Also, a complete back. He will block. He can catch it out of the backfield, and he's an excellent runner. Very nifty in the hole. Here comes Huerta on the approach. Against the win, it hangs high. And Ricky Turner starts at the five. And Turner stopped before he gets to the 20-yard line. Paul White, number four. Number 34, Dexter Siegler. Both there on the stop. How about the pro potential of Leonard Conley? Your thoughts, Jim? I think, you know, we see a lot of the smaller backs effective now in professional football. Dave Meggett comes to mind with the Giants uh, as just an example. Dexter Carter with the San Francisco 49ers. There is a place for that shiftiness, that small guy who can be so effective with the new spread offenses. Speaking of spread offenses, Pittsburgh with four receivers to the left. And Van Pelt calls on Ricky Turner. And Turner gets five yards to the 25-yard line. And Smith, the linebacker, Roland Smith, the corner. So a couple of Smiths stopping Turner. They'll give that all day. Pitt pretty content to just let the clock run out here in the first half, try to get in that locker room, regroup, and prepare for the second half. Now, University of Miami officials better, better lock the back door in that Pittsburgh locker room. They might be warming up the buses. Down to 40 seconds in the quarter. Van Pelt dialing down the middle, nearly picked off by Darren Smith. Well, the sophomore out of Miami's New Orleans High School, seems like there's two or three of them out there. He is all over the field. Double zone, the two safeties split. You have your tight end isolated on a linebacker. That's supposed to be a mid mismatch. But look who's 25 yards downfield ahead of the tight end and in better position to catch the football. Darren Smith, he's playing incredible football for the Canes. And he's disappointed. He wanted the ball. Well, very popular assistant coach, Tony Terperville, does a great job with the linebackers. He got on Darren Smith's case early in the year, and Smith has really responded. Third and five for Van Pelt who goes down the sideline for Orlando Truitt and Charles Farms able to make a play on it. Big play for Farms. Had he not got a hand on it, Truitt was gone. But you can sum up that series like you've been able to sum up most series for Pitt in this first half. Three and out, punter onto the field. See the replay, Farms breaks on the ball. Orlando Truitt unable to come down with it. Well, this was the kind of game that frightened Dennis Erickson. He knew that Pittsburgh was better than 3-4-1 and one, would indicate they haven't been here in the first half, and the guys in the orange jerseys have had everything to do with that. And what he has yet been able to assess is how good is his own football team. Awfully good this afternoon. He'll find out as November turns to December, and his club gets ready for a January bowl date. Nice punt by Greenfield over the shoulder. Williams makes the catch, and Kevin Williams looking for a block. Well, time one, but he finds running room on the cutback. Two penalty markers down. Kevin Williams taking up some time and showing us some of his open field abilities. 52-yard punt, 14-yard return. Eric, you're going to see some, some uh, penalties on the field right now, but I think if you're Paul Hackett right now, you're awfully disappointed in your football team. Just Miami on the return, the 15 yards, first down. Jim, you played at Michigan, you played for the Miami Dolphins. What can a coach say to a football team after they have been humiliated through one half of play? Well, if ever a just a real chewing out was called for, it's called for in this First halftime down. for the Pitt Panther football team because we have seen so many missed tackles. We've seen 
effort that is less than 100%. I think Paul Hackett needs to sit this football team down, appeal to their pride, tell them they're being totally embarrassed here in the Orange Bowl, come back out, play with a team that's got some, like a team that's got some character, and give him 30 minutes of football in the second half to make this a legitimate football game. This should be the final play of the first half. Leonard Conley brought down line of scrimmage. Tackle made on the play by Ricardo McDonald. What an incredible first half of football for the University of Miami. Dominated in every way. 14 points in the first quarter, 17 more in the second. They'll go to the dressing rooms halfway through with a 31-0 lead. Hard sledding for the University of Pittsburgh. They have won just once in their last six games, and they are in danger of their second losing season since 1972. And one thing that's been a constant for them, Jim, slow starts in their 27-20 loss to Louisville and their 31-22 setback against Notre Dame. Gotten the hole early. They did get 15 fourth quarter points against the Fighting Irish. But they're going to have to do a whole lot of coming back to tighten this thing at the Orange Bowl. And their counterpart, Miami, today, the most problematic period in the game for them thus far this year has been the third quarter. You'll recall back to BYU when they took it on the chin. They lose 28-21, then abysmal third quarter, and then in South Bend against the Fighting Irish and Notre Dame in that third quarter, Notre Dame ran off 20 plays at one point to Miami's one. So I'm sure Dennis Erickson talked to his club at halftime, talked to him about the problems they've had in the third quarter, and explained, we've got to finish this team off. Let's do it now. Well, focus must have been the centerpiece of Dennis Erickson's halftime discussion with his team. Hard to stay focused when you've had it all your way and lead it 31 nothing as we get set for the third quarter. Eric Reed and Jim Mandich with you at the Orange Bowl, where Pittsburgh was held the 22 yards first half rushing and out gained 371 to 89. The official totals on first downs were 18 to 3, and the official numbers on Craig Erickson, 20 for 23, 282 yards, two touchdowns. And he had about as perfect a first half of football as you can imagine. This is Don Silvestri for Pittsburgh. Soccer style toward Randall Hill, who needs just 28 yards to become Miami's all-time kickoff return leader. And he gets 20 of them, or thereabouts, on that return to the 20-yard line. Well, how long and how much we see of Craig Erickson in the second half remains to be seen. Randall Hill, senior out of Killian High School in Miami, four first-half catches. Five-yard penalty being assessed to the Hurricanes, illegal procedure. Only addition to those numbers, it's actually 20 for 23, 282. Those are the official numbers. Either way, spectacular first half for Erickson. He will remember his 15th career start. Came into the game just 391 yards shy of Jim Kelly. Penalty was declined. And looking at Craig Erickson, Georgia Tech has defeated the University of Virginia on a late field goal, 41-38. Sean Moore's stock will fall as a Heisman Trophy candidate. Craig Erickson will bolster his efforts to secure the Heisman Trophy this year by virtue of his performance. So the number one team knocked off this afternoon. Leonard Conley straight ahead, brought down by number 46, Craig Cobb. Check it, that was A.J. Alex Johnson opening up at running back. Stephen McGuire injured his groin early. A.J. and Conley have shared the running duties. Just trying to open the second half off with a zone block on the left-hand side. We see Leon Searcy leading the way. Sometimes you go into the locker room at halftime and you just lose the rhythm to some extent. It's good to just come back out on that opening play and hear pad on pad. On second and four, Johnson tries to cut it back short side left and gets out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Alex Johnson run out by Tinker Harris. There's A.J. Eight carries, 30 yards first half. Had the one-yard touchdown first drive. Four yards. Mario Cristobal, Lewis Cristobal, Darren Handy, Claude Jones, and Leon Searcy up front for Miami. Randall Hill, Lamar Thomas, Wesley Carroll, the wideouts. Ralph Chudzinski, the tight end. Greg Erickson gone the distance at quarterback. A third down and two on our opening drive, third period. 
Nightfall here at the Orange Bowl. Lights on. And it's been lights out for Pitt to this point. Here's Johnson up the middle. Picked up the first down as he plows across the 30 and gets to the 31. Will be close, but he does have it. As you would expect, over Claude Jones and Leon Searcy in the short yarded situation. A.J. does a good job of reading the block, knows exactly where the marker is, and gets the first down. Alex, 5'9", 170, able to move the pile. Good vision and very quick nifty in the hole. Goes where they're not. On first and 10, short drop Erickson. And a nice catch by Randall Hill, who had to come back for it. Picks up four yards to the 35. In coverage was Marcus Washington. And a good throw by Craig Erickson. He saw Walt Marcus Washington closing on the ball. Threw it low and away on the outside where only Randall Hill could make the catch. And he did. Take a look at it. Sees Market Washington close. Down and away. Good throw. And a good job by Randall going down and scooping it up. Hill had a 10-catch game against Cal earlier this year. That was his fifth catch today. On the counter, Johnson comes right side and gets to the 44-yard line. Eight-yard pickup for Alex. Up by number 48, Ricardo McDonald, and again by Marcus Washington. Counter trap. And I don't think he gets touched until he's seven yards downfield. Look at the blocking. Look at the sprawling pit players. He's eight, nine, ten yards downfield before a pit panther touches him. I'll tell you one thing. Ricardo McDonald, number 48 for Pitt, has stood out. One of the few panthers having a good afternoon. He chased that one down from the backside. On first and ten, Erickson keeps. Has plenty of time and fires to Chudzinski. Sitting there at the 40-yard line, an easy grab. And a first down pickup in the pit territory. My right. kind of guy. They may be calling that incomplete. Fake the counter trap. The linebackers react as you would expect. And at the top of your scene, you see Chud. He knows where the open spot is. Did he catch it? No, nope. he did not. Chud, how could you? No wonder Chud just kind of laid there and played possum. <laughs> He'd like to have that one back. That hit him right in the numbers. And that's the kind of catch we're used to Chudzinski making. Well, He's he had a real gamer for the hurricane he had the six catch 112 yard day at texas tech including the 32 yard touchdown that must have been a fun one to watch second down and 10. erickson being chased by prentice wright and had to toss it out of bounds incomplete and that has got to be the first time in this football game that erickson has thrown back-to-back -back incompletions and the first time this afternoon that well maybe not the first time but the first uh, first time in several series where we've seen any kind of pressure on Craig Erickson. Prentice Wright for Pitt doing a good job of getting to the quarterback and making a hurry, hurry to throw. This, by the way, is Miami's homecoming weekend. They have won seven straight on homecoming. Last time they lost on a homecoming weekend was 1982. A 24-7 setback to Florida State. On third and ten, look at the time for Erickson. And wide open is Wesley Carroll, but it short hopped him. Tough throw for Erickson, crossed the field, but he had Wesley Carroll by his lonesome down the left sideline. Craig pulled a string on it. He scans the field, does a good job of coming back and locating Wesley Carey. Carroll. Doesn't quite get enough on it. You can see how wide open Wesley Carroll is. His legs just go out from underneath him, and he can't get back to get the football. So the drive ends with three consecutive incompletions. And a poor snap. Paul Schneider able to keep it from going over his head. And he fumbles the football. Pitts recovered it. It'll be a touchdown for Doug Whaley. So that's how Pitt averts the shutout. Poor snap. Schneider couldn't hold it. And the freshman, Whaley. Miami will get the ball. Uh, Pitt will get right. the ball at the 25-yard line. Can't advance them up. My mistake. Big turnover and a big opportunity for Pitt to try and get points on the board. They're going to have to talk Doug Whaley out of giving that score up. He thought he was in for six. Well, Paul Hackett might have gotten through to his players in that Pitt locker room, Eric. Seemed to have come out here in the second half, played a little more inspired football, and they get the turnover on that series. Let's see if they can do something with it. That gives the crowd something to cheer about. They love their defense here in Miami. 
And the Orange Bowl rocks for the first time since early. Alex Van Pelt at quarterback. Glenn DeVoe behind him. Van Pelt throwing incomplete. Again, extremely close coverage, this time by Roland Smith. Pass was intended for Chris Boyer, a junior out of Detroit. Miami secondary been playing it skin tight this afternoon. Van Pelt gets a little time here. Got that rifle arm, he rockets it. Boyer makes a mistake. He does not step back to the quarterback. Roland Smith was able to close and make the play. First half numbers for Alex Van Pelt, seven for 13, 67 yards. Second down, 10 from the Miami 25. Incomplete, intended for DeVoe, and he was smothered by Michael Barrow. There's some Miami linebackers, Jim. They really haven't missed a beat with Jesse Armstead out. Crum moved back to the weak side. Barrow in the middle and Smith on the other side. A little bootleg action, trying to get Alex Van Pelt some time. Not much there as Michael Barrow does an excellent job in coverage. Roland Smith coming up. That'll bring up a third down and 10 from the Miami 25-yard line. Three minutes in, third quarter, Hurricanes out in front, 31-0. Arnell Dickerson, wide left, Orlando Pruitt to the right. And Van Pelt, deep drop. Under a rush, fires toward the end zone. Great catch by Orlando Pruitt at the three-yard line. That's a big-time grab in between Charles Farms and Roland Smith. Four, the sophomore to Birmingham, Orlando Pruitt, picked him up 22 yards. This is a prayer by Van Pelt. Doesn't have much time. Russell Maryland right in his face. He throws it up, and Orlando Truitt just goes up and takes it away from two Miami defenders. Farms from the back. Roland Smith from the front. Tremendous play by Truitt. Terrific grab. His third of the afternoon. First down and goal for the Panthers at the Miami three. This is Glenn DeVoe, and he does not escape the tackle of Shane Curry. Curry, number 44, right side tackle out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Twice has been player of the week since moving from defensive end, the defensive tackle. Good stop on DeVoe. No movement on the line of scrimmage. Great surge by the Miami defensive line. You can see Darren Crime doing a good job of stacking it up. Shane Curry coming down with the ball curve. DeVoe at fullback now. Kevin Williams in the eye shot. Extra tight ends on second and goal from the two. Pitch back, Williams. Williams looking to turn it up. And Charles Farms there to drop him for a four-yard loss back at the six. But Charles Farms just kept stringing it out. The young man from Houston said, no deal, Mr. Williams. Excellent defense by Charles Farms. He was out on an island. He's the only man between the goal line and the ball. And look at him play. Strings it out right to the sideline. The plant and the cutback doesn't go for it. No, sir. Big play for the Hurricane. Interesting day for Farms. His 20th career start, but the first of his junior season. Early Brown arthroscopic knee surgery yesterday lost. For the next three to four weeks, and Farms has come up big. Third down, goal to go for Pitt at the Miami Six. And Pelt looking, firing, complete the sights the football. Fumble football. Miami has it, and they have held Pittsburgh. The shutout lives. Well, had Sykes held on, he would have lost two or three yards, but still would have given Pitt a fourth down chance. But the Miami defense takes away the football and preserves the 31-0 score. Good job there by Roland Smith. You see him being congratulated by his teammates. The route continues at the Orange Bowl with 10.46 left in the third quarter. Still 31-0 Hurricanes. Broadcast rights to today's football telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by the University of Miami solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Wouldn't think Paul Hackett and his staff would want to rerun this ball game. It has not gone well for Pittsburgh. And that was a tremendous defensive surge by the Miami Hurricanes. And, and I think 
you saw demonstrated there why Miami has been so dominant in this game, and that is a tremendous advantage in speed on both sides of the ball. The Miami skill people on offense and the entire defense, particularly the linebackers and the safeties, really close on the ball quickly for Miami. Interesting to see the way the crowd got reinvolved here at the Orange Bowl when Pitt got close. After the air snap from center on Paul Snyder's punt. On first down, Erickson under duress. We'll tuck it in and pick up a couple on the 17-yard line. Greg Erickson scampering for four. Take a look at the scamperer. He looks right. Nothing there. Great protection. Looks left. Can't find anybody. I love to see a thoroughbred like that run. Great athlete, Craig Erickson. Keith Snell made the bid at nailing Erickson, but Craig beat him to the, to the sideline. Second down, six, 10.38 remaining, third quarter. Here's Shannon Crowell to the 21-yard line. Near the first down, picked up about five yards. Joe Conlon on the shot. Conlon, Hicks, and Hamilton on the pit front. Ricardo McDonald, Travis Wright, Gobb, and Snell, the linebackers. Good job by Darren Handy. Leon Searcy is doing a tremendous job of knocking Keith Hamilton off the ball. That enables Cole to get forward and get that yardage. That was the big matchup up front. Searcy against the 6'7 defensive end, Keith Hamilton. Big advantage for Searcy. Third down and a couple at the Miami 21-yard line. Erickson going to toss it. As a man, and Randall Hill makes the pass at the 40-yard line. 19-yard pickup on third down and two, and another first down for the Hurricanes. The test at the college level of a guy's arm is his ability to throw the deep O cut. Now, this might be a 20-yard completion, but you can see that ball is in the air for 45 yards, throwing it in a perfect spot where only Randall Hill can make the catch inbound. Randall Hill came into this football game with 26 receptions on his senior season. That was his sixth little football game. Numbers on Erickson, he's over 300 yards now, 307 unofficially. He's completed 22 out of 28. And gets another second catch today for Wesley Carroll, and he is in Oh, he's got a big block there from Kevin Williams, and Carroll gets to midfield. Pretty entertaining nine-yard pickup on first down. And just shows the awareness of Wesley Carroll. He knew that if he made that catch and continued to the boundary, he was going to get a lick. He stopped, reversed his field. Craig delivers it in the zone. Watch this. The reversal, back to the boundary, and get nine yards out of nothing. And there you see Kevin Williams with that hit you were talking about. The Hurricane receivers have great pride in blocking downfield and for protecting each other. This is Wesley Carroll's 20th game as a Hurricane. That was his 94th reception. He has been extremely productive. On second and short, Erickson drills it, but it's incomplete. Intended for number 35, Darrell Spencer, citing young player, just a sophomore out of Merritt Island, Florida. And that'll bring up a third and one with 9.14 left third quarter. Trying to get the tail back involved in a seam pattern, and he has him, but Spencer unable to come up with a catch. Release the strong back, keep him on the hash mark, run him down the field. Try to hit that soft spot between the closing safety and the linebacker. The receiving firm of Hill, Thomas, and Carroll to the right. They just spread it open to Shannon Crowell, who picked up the first down, shooting right up the middle. So Crowell, who missed the beginning part of the season with an E injury, senior out of Atlanta, Georgia, back and involved. Good surge at the line of scrimmage. Crowell, not much there, but ensured third and short. It was enough, enough to get the first down. So the drive continues. Began at the Miami 13. First and 10 now at the Panther 48. Erickson moving Crowell to a slot left. Keeps Carroll in for protection and fires incomplete. Looking for Chudzinski on the square out. Covered well by the linebacker, Prentice Wright. 
Yeah, with tight ends in Miami, Chudzinski and Bethel, both seniors. Be interesting next year, maybe Coleman Bell steps forward. Exciting sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. And he looks to be the heir apparent. On that play, Chud had the opportunity to match up one and one against the inside linebacker, Prentice Wright. But Wright did a good job of covering the hurricane tight end. Erickson over 300 yards throwing for the sixth time this year and for the third straight Saturday. Second down, 10. Craig has Wesley Carroll wide open. Can he find him? He tries. He found him, but he's out of bounds. Well, Erickson was looking all the way at number 81, who was wide open, but Craig was on the run and couldn't get it there. That'll bring up a third and 10. Craig showing great elusiveness today. Yeah, one sack on the day. Tries to get it to Wesley. Wesley leans, leans, <laughs> just can't quite keep the feet inbound. Great effort and great awareness by Wesley Carroll. Always seems to know where he is on the football field. Always seems to know what the situation is and what has to be done. And nice looking camera work by our crew at the Orange Bowl under the expert guidance of veteran director Harlan Singer. Well, Miami nearly perfect on third down. Six out of nine. Third and ten. Bethel makes the catch, picks up the first down. And I want to tell you, Prentice is right, right with Randy Bethel. Perfect delivery by Erickson. Uh, great read and good job of getting open by the tight end. We mentioned that isolation with Chip Ziske, who played before. This time, Randy Bethel wins that one-on-one -on -one isolation. He beats Prentice Wright by going up and taking the football away from him. Well, they needed 10. They picked up about 11. But the other impressive thing about Erickson today, he has really spread it around. Lamar Thomas with four catches, Randall Hill with six, Carroll with two. The tight ends have been involved. That's the Miami offense. They spread you out and pick you to death. We've seen the tight end come into play the last couple of weeks. What teams have done is the Miami trips formation. Three wide receivers to one side. At times they were covering it with four, sometimes rotating the zone, covering it with five. That left some good one-on-one -on -one opportunities back to the weak side. Last week they exploded against Texas Tech. And this afternoon and early evening here in the Orange Bowl, they're getting it done again against the Pitt Panthers. There's the update on the senior from West Palm Beach, Florida. Outstanding afternoon and early evening. And it is a very comfortable evening. Breeze blowing in the open end of the Orange Bowl. The direction the Hurricanes are traveling here in the third period. Penalty marker down. 7.47 left in this quarter. Still 31-0 Miami. Ball start. Get Miami. Five yards. Illegal procedure signaled by Buddy Ward. It'll be first down and 15 now for Miami. A very tough schedule for Pittsburgh, playing Notre Dame and Miami on consecutive weekends. Paul Hackett, the Panther coach, said last week was our bowl game. We gave it all we had, and we came up short. They've come up well short this afternoon. Panthers showing blitz. Backing off on first and 15 as Crowell gets the give. He picks up about four to the 36-yard line. Be more than that, a six-yard gain for Crowell. Conspicuously absent now in the second half and the first half. Stephen McGuire, who has been so effective as at the tailback position for the King. Shannon Crowell getting plenty of playing time. We see him here running off tackle. Prentice right on that stop. Yep. McGuire ag re-aggravated a strained groin. And after the first series, he put it on ice. Off week for Miami. Next week, they'll follow that with home games against Boston College and Syracuse, then hit the road at San Diego State. Second and nine for Erickson. Lobs it deep for Randall Hill. And it's picked off and then dropped. Marcus Washington. Had a chance of the interception down at the five-yard line and did not come up with it. Marcus Washington was very vocal this week, saying Miami's receivers are very average. He himself looks very average on this play because he should have come down, come down with this ball that was thrown up for grabs by Craig Erickson. He goes to the high point, good technique, but fails to hold on to the football. 
Nice tackle by Hill. Well, throwing situation here for Craig Erickson, who is connected on 24 of 34. It's third and nine. Blitz coming. Erickson puts it up for grabs. And it is caught by Lamar Thomas up a six-yard line. Penalty flags right there as well. Now Lamar Thomas on the other end of the Erickson rainbow. A 28-yard pickup. We're going to see the defensive pass interference call. I'm pretty sure that was face guarding on part of the pit defender. The play was stamped. First down. We've lost our audio hookup with referee Buddy Ward, but here's another look. Quick pressure. Craig knows he's got Lamar one-on-one. -on -one. Leaping Lamar. Good opportunity to make the completion, and he does. On the underthrow, come back for it, as so often we see. Right in front of Vernon Lewis, who had stumbled and tried to regroup. On first down and goal, here comes Leonard Convoy with the escort. He is in for the touchdown, Miami. Second touchdown run for Leonard Conley. to attempt the point after, following Leonard Conley's eight-yard touchdown run on his own right end. Another perfect play for Miami. Great running by Conley. All he had to do was follow the convoy and dance in untouched. 38-0 Hurricanes. 6 3 left, third quarter. The route is on. pretty November evening here in the city of Miami. A gentle breeze blowing in, but it's been gale force winds blowing for the Miami offense. 38-0 Hurricanes lead it. They just capped off a 13-play 87-yard drive with a nifty 8-yard run for Leonard Conley. Conley untouched. There's Cristobal ahead of him. He folds it right in behind. And there goes Conley seeing the end line. And I think we've seen this pit football team quit out here this afternoon. There you see it. That counter step, that step to the strong side, come back to the weak side, sets up the block. It makes it influences the linebacker and is the thing that enables Cristobal to get out in front and wall off that linebacker at the point of impact. Now Leonard Conley had 56 yards rushing in the first half on nine carries up some pretty impressive numbers. Two touchdowns rushing for Conley this afternoon. On the pickup, Steve Israel again straight ahead up to the 27-yard line. About a 17-yard kick return. By the way, the numbers for Conley on the update, 10 carries, 65 yards, and the two touchdowns. Jim, you know it's been impressive, the distance on the Miami drives. Early on, 13 plays, 68 yards. They went 86 yards. They traveled 92 yards in the second quarter in five plays. And here, 13 plays, 77 yards. Now back to work for Alex Van Pelt and the pit attack. This is freshman Kevin Williams. Some rare daylight. He gets across the 40 to the 41-yard line. 14-yard pickup on first down for the freshman out of Galveston, Texas, Kevin Williams. Best rushing play of the day for Pitt. Kevin Williams sees some daylight to the weak side. At the 41. Shows some pretty nifty moves. Darrell Williams, the safety, making the stop. Really a shame, Jim, we do not get to see the talented junior tailback for Pitt, Kervin Richards. There's Williams again. Short game. Would have really yard. made a difference in this game. Darryl Darryl Williams. We saw Kervin Richards warm up prior to the game. He looked pretty spry, but I think Paul Hackett made the decision that it's better to keep the young man on the bench this afternoon and try to get him 
well so he could finish out the season for the Panthers. Well, Richards gained 1,228 yards as a freshman, 1,282 as a sophomore. He had three consecutive 100-yard games to open up the year for Paul Hackett, 119 against Ohio, 117 against BC, and even 100 against Oklahoma. But injured the ankle prior to the Syracuse game, and he's been banged up ever since. Now second down and eight, nothing there for Glenn DeVoe. Rusty Medeiros, the freshman out of Ozark, Missouri, on the stop. And you know the Hurricane defense right now is smelling shutout. They want it desperately. Gino Toretta taking two snaps. Gino, the sophomore backup to Craig Erickson. We saw Gino last week in Lubbock, Texas, against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Pretty effective at the helm of the Hurricane offense a week ago. Down under four and a half minutes left in the third quarter. And on third down and nine, nobody fooled on the draw play. And DeVoe ran right in the number 56, Michael Barrow, and number 45, Darren Smith. Just a pickup of two on third down and eight. Actually, no game. And they'll bring up fourth and eight. And the star of the day for Pitt, their punter, Brian Greenfield, with another chance to impress. First half, Greenfield, six punts. Greenfield, average of 46 yards a boot. Actually, there's your update. Seven for 43 now, a long of 61. He'll keep his hang time here with the wind at his back. has the stopwatch in hand. For Dandy, as Williams backs up, watches it sail into the end zone. Hang time of just under six seconds, a punt of 58 yards, wind aided by the nation's leading punter, Brian Greenfield. 3.40 left in the third quarter. All Miami here at the Orange Bowl. This effort, number eight, Miami should move up in the polls. They have dominated Pittsburgh at the Orange Bowl today, holding the Panthers without points and to just five first downs. By the way, the Miami men's basketball team will see its first action this season when it hosts the visiting national team from Brazil. That'll be Monday night at the Miami Arena. Coach Leonard Hamilton's exciting 90-91 Hurricanes debut for the first time. And by the way, season tickets and tickets for this and all Hurricane basketball games are on sale at the Heck Athletic Center on the Miami campus and at Ticketmaster, or you can get hoop tickets by calling 1-800-GO-CANES. Well, the sophomore out of Pinole, California, Gino Toretta, comes on in relief of Craig Erickson, who finishes with 355 yards on 25 for 35. And they're tumbling with a burst up the middle, and look at Leonard go. Finally, run out of bounds is Leonard Conley by Bobby Boykin, but Conley gets all the way to the 46-yard line, a 26-yard pickup. A gaping hole opened up by Darren Handy, Claude Jones, Good job of picking his way through that hole by Leonard Conley. Splashing, makes a miss. And Gino Toretta comes in, and this offense doesn't miss a beat. There's the numbers on Conley. 11 carries, 90 yards, and the two touchdowns. Under three and a half minutes left, third quarter. Toretta's first throw, deflected and knocked away incomplete. Play made by the Panthers, Doug Whaley, number 45, who recovered the fumble earlier on the punt. Second down. Trying to get yeah. Wesley Carroll one-on-one -on -one after the fake, but Whaley makes a heck of a job, does a heck of a job of getting his hand on the ball and prevent, preventing Wesley Carroll from making the catch. Morris Copeland, Lamar Thomas, and Daryl Spencer flanked to the right for the sophomore Gino Toretta. On second and ten, Copeland makes the sideline catch, cross up the football, and Pittsburgh is coveted. And that will be a completion and a fumble. So the Panthers recover their second fumble today. Looks like number 26. Yes, it is number 26, Joe Conlon that covered it. Copeland does a good job of making the catch, but he doesn't protect the, protect the football. He gets stripped right there. And the Hurricanes turn the ball over again this afternoon. Panthers take over inside Miami territory at the 39-yard line. 
And with their team leading 38-0, the killer instinct from this Iron Bowl crowd emerges. Van Pelt looking and finding Darnell Dickerson for all of one yard. Dickerson stopped immediately by Roland Smith. And Darnell, an interesting story. Starting quarterback as a sophomore for the Panthers. Threw for 1,600 yards and seven touchdowns. Miami has just completely solved this Pitt offense. Here they're closing on the ball. Yes, Pitt gets the completion, but they gain a half a yard. They are smothering the Pitt Panthers this afternoon. 240 and counting left in the third quarter. 38-0 Miami. Second and over nine. And Glenn DeVoe spun down unassisted by Michael Barrow after a four-yard gain to the 45. The 30 Excuse me, the 35. Glenn DeVoe. Glenn DeVoe, a Floridian from Cocoa, Florida. Four yards. That's twice in the last two series. Six. Michael Barrow has sniffed out the draw play. There he is again, number 56. DeVoe, nothing there. Michael Barrow really coming along at the middle linebacker position. And flanked by Crum and Smith. An impressive triumvirate in the middle of that Miami defense. Van Pelt, 9 for 17, under 100 yards. On third and five, he does not connect with DeVoe at the 30. And even had DeVoe made the catch, Crum would have had, a, would have had him short of the first down. There's Maurice, number 49, leading tackler on this club the last three seasons. Well, the way Miami is dominating this football team. Pitt looks like a high school football team here. From a strategy standpoint, Miami way ahead. From an execution standpoint, Miami far and away a better football team than the Pitt Panthers. And that's indicated on the score scoreboard, 38-0. And he knows every play in the book. He just can't get his guys on the field to execute against the game. Don't worry about the Temple Owls and the Nicky Lions of Penn State after this football game. That's who Pitt closes with. On fourth and five, incomplete. Intended for DeVoe, outstanding coverage by Maurice Crum. And Miami takes over on downs, the shutout preserves a standing ovation here at the ball. Truth be told, the heart and soul, the key to the success of this Miami football program in the 80s. Not the great quarterback, not the high octane offense. They have played dominating defense for the last decade. You know, since their first national championship in 1983, Miami has won 79 and lost just 13. It's a winning percentage of over 85%. Down to the 35, Toretta finds Randall Hill. And Hill comes up with a catch. He gets out of bounds at midfield. A pickup of 15 yards on his seventh catch today. A moment ago, I scolded Olanda Truitt, the wide receiver for the Pitt Panthers, for not coming back to the ball. Here you take a look at Gino, and what do you see? Randall Hill coming back to meet the ball. And that's what enables him to make the catch. Copeland and Kevin Williams flanked up top. In the slot is Wesley Carroll. Long setback, Johnson. Oh, it's a red up a fastball, but Copeland couldn't hold on. Now the ups and downs of a young one. A good one, but a young one. How well I know that feeling. Young guy in the lineup. Those hands get a little more brittle. You tend to press. You want to make the play here as opposed to caressing that football. Horace Copeland tries to squeeze the life out of it. Can't make the catch. I like that. Caressing the leather. When it comes your way, Jim Mandich did that many times in his playing career at Michigan and with the Dolphins. 132 left third quarter. 38-0 Miami. Toretta taking a stroll, finds Wesley Carroll. Carroll picks up four to the pit of the yard line. You know, the Hurricanes, fourth in the country this year, averaging just under 500 yards of offense again. School record is 461. They're en route to shattering that. Here's Gino. 
He's at the controls of the offense now. Drifts outside the pocket. Finds old reliable Wesley Carroll. No doubt that Carroll will be catching footballs for a National Football League team next fall. 6-1 senior out of Cleveland. Has been a big impact player in two years with the Hurricanes. Third down and seven. And the screen goes incomplete. Alex Johnson got tripped up at the line of scrimmage. One of the few punts of the afternoon is now for Miami. Alex Johnson actually got his legs crossed up with his own guard, Lewis Christopher. Well, let's think about this. Paul Snyder. On his first punt, never did get to kick it. Snap was over his head. He fumbled it. This will be his first punt. And no problems there. Sends it into the wind. Doug Hessler will watch it bounce. And Darren Smith stops it at the three-yard line. Well, all coming up roses for the Hurricanes. A 42-yard punt, no return as if the Panthers didn't have enough problems. A minute seven left in the third quarter. They trail at 38 nothing, and they'll start inside their own five-yard line. I think we're gonna see some fresh faces in the pit lineup. Yep, new quarterback coming in. Alex Van Pelt mercifully lifted for Scott Stark, number 12, a senior out of Mission Viejo, California. On the year, he's six for 10, 55 yards. And he gives it to the fullback, Lance Markle, they have been decimated with injuries to their running backs, Ronald Redman, a young man from Miami. They're starting fullback out for the year with an Achilles injury. And Markle is a walk-on. He's a wrestler at Pittsburgh. Darren Smith made the stop. The game was three, seven. Van Pelt finishes an unspectacular day and evening of football. Nine for 19, 89 yards. Threw it 51 times a week ago against Notre Dame and completed 37 of them. Second down, seven. Here's Kevin Williams. Getting a little daylight, but knocked down by Darrell Williams. Just shy of the 15-yard line. About a seven-yard pickup will be close to the first down. Just a few seconds left in the fourth quarter. That's what we're thinking. Third quarter. Third quarter. Excuse me. <laughs> Does seem like we've been here a while. <laughs> Imagine how long it feels for pit coach Paul Hackett. His club gonna drop to three, five, and one after tonight's play. On first down, Glenn DeVoe spun around and dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Rusty Medeiros, along with Michael Barrow on the stop of DeVoe. And that will do it for three quarters. Put it in the book, turn the page, we head you toward the fourth quarter in what's been one of the most one-sided games of the year for the University of Miami. Fourteen nothing after one, 31 zip at halftime. Leonard Conley's eight-yard touchdown run, only scoring of the third quarter. And there's what we have. Eric Reed along with Jim Mandich. We finally get to quarter number four. Not much to Nebraska 12. Not much to write home about for Pittsburgh, and a whole lot to be pleased about for Miami. And with the national situation so upside down, the number one ranked. Virginia Cavaliers upset today. Miami needs to just focus on taking care of their own store, and they've done that this afternoon. They're going to be a real factor in the end here when it comes to that race for number one. Second down and 10. Dave Moore on the catch. Moore, the tight end, turns it up and gets to the 27-yard line. As the first down, a pickup of 12 yards. Plenty of bowl representatives on hand here, according to the Hurricanes. Represented today in the Orange Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, the Cotton Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, the Citrus Bowl. Certainly the Orange Bowl is going to be a factor, and the Gator Bowl is represented as well. Here we see the pass on the tight end. Stark reads it. Moore came in as a second leading receiver and does a good job of getting upfield against the Miami defense. Seventh first down of the football game for the Panthers. They give it a Markle on first down, and he goes straight ahead to the 32, a pickup of five. 
When you look at Miami's bowl resume, it is impressive, as you'd guess. Seven, four, seven years, three trips to the Orange Bowl, two times to the Sugar, and two times to the Fiesta. And in the last four years, Miami has been ranked second in the country twice and first in the country twice. And I think that has been matched only one time before in college football. Junior Green into the football game as a wideout for Pitt on second down and five. Chris Boyer and Orlando Truitt also in there as pass catchers, but they give it to DeVoe, and DeVoe Three gets three to the 35-yard line. DeVoe stopped by Rusty Madeiras. Madeiras, an interesting football player. The big debut game last week, 12 tackles against Texas Tech, five and a half sacks. Sports Illustrated honored him as their player of the week, but Dennis Erickson said stars are not made in one game but he is a tenacious young football player and he is a promising prospect and i don't care at what level you're playing at when you get five and a half sacks that's an awfully good afternoon work an abysmal number it's been a nightmare football game for pitt and miami's defense again on the third down situation there's darren smith hat on the ball carrier smothers him it'll be, be faced with a fourth down situation i'm sure we'll see the punter come onto the field the walk-on got stopped by a stud, Darren Smith. You start trying to add it up. What is making Miami so special? Why are they at the forefront of college football right now? And I think some of the things they do from a, an approach to the game that spread the field offense is pretty unique. It's, it's some fine tuning, but they've got the athletes that can execute it on defense. The thing that really separates Miami is the speed and the athleticism of their front four, of their linebackers, and of their DBs. See how Greenfield does against the wind. Not very good. Low bounced it inside the 30, and it rolls dead at the 21. And a break in the action will step aside and remind you, 12-18 left in the five, football game. Number eight, Miami, 38, Pittsburgh, nothing. you were just mentioning the speed dimension for these Miami Hurricanes during the week Paul Hackett said Miami is a dramatic football team when you watch film their speed absolutely stuns you and we see it week in week out uh, the, the separation when the Miami receivers are running a pass route they're separating themselves from the defensive players on the other side of the ball when Miami is playing defense they're always closing making that separation shorter and uh, just from a philosophical standpoint jimmy johnson really recognized the importance of speed in college football particularly on the defensive side of the ball speed to burn for the hurricanes of dennis erickson first and ten at the 22 38 nothing their lead the screen caught over the middle by kevin williams another of the young and swift chopped down at the 31. Nine-yard gain. Brandon Lewis and Steve Israel on the shot of Kevin Williams. When you think of Big East football, how about these numbers? This Pitt team beat Boston College in game two this year, 29 to six, and in weekend number four, they tied Syracuse 2020. We're gonna get a good look at Big East football. November 17th, Boston College comes to town. We'll be doing the ball game here on Sports Channel. And then the week after, the Syracuse Orangemen visit the Orange Bowl. On second and short, Crowell tripped up on, on his own man. Bumped into Mario Cristobal and went down, lost a yard. Well, you know, the term Big East football really is just a term right now. There is no such thing at the moment as Big East football. Boston College, Syracuse, Pittsburgh have long been Eastern independents. I think Shannon Crowell tripped in anticipation here. There was so much green in front of him. But again, getting back to Big East football, I think there are some players to be named later, some teams out there. West Virginia is a team that comes to mind that would be a perfect fit in Big East, both in football and basketball. They're talking the crossover games with the, South, the Southwest Conference as well to more nationalize the, uh, the football program. Beretta keeping on third and three, turning it up, but I think, well, it would be very, no, he stepped out of bounds back at the 28-yard line, so it'll be well short. Yeah. Well, I know the Eastern coaches, Jack Bicknell, Paul Hackett, some of the others uh, at Syracuse, Dick McPherson, they would like to see the Eastern independents included. But I don't think you'll see West Virginia and Temple and Virginia Tech absorbed as basketball schools, but 
A workable idea, obviously, is adding them into a football-only Big East Conference. And I think that's the, the scenario that is most viable right now. Paul Snyder with a heavy rush coming. Nails it to Steve Israel, who calls for the fair catch, although he did have some room at the 33. That's where the Panthers will take over, first and 10, with 10.44 to play in the, in the fourth quarter. 38-yard punt, no return. 20 to cheer about in Miami. And on the lead of this one-sided ball game, 38 to nothing. The Canes will have a week off, opportunity to regroup, to heal themselves, and to refocus on the goal. Scott Stark, complete to DeVoe, and DeVoe at the 37-yard line is stopped after a pickup of four. Aaron Smith right there, along with Kevin Patrick. Dennis Erickson looked at this game and said, this one is crucial for us. He deemed Pittsburgh the toughest of his remaining opponents, BC, Syracuse, and San Diego State. DeVoe on the strong back delay makes a good catch, splits the Hurricane defenders, battles his way upfield for a pretty good game. Ryan McNeil getting involved, the sophomore from Fort Pierce, Florida. Nice ankle tackle. Second and five. DeVoe picking his way across the 40 to the 42. Four yard gain, it'll bring up a third and one. We talked about the Miami Hurricane goals as they relate to this game and the rest of the season. After the Notre Dame loss, the goals were, we want to be a top five team. Here you see the handoff to DeVoe. That's a pretty good yardage there. Brings up a short yardage, short yardage situation on third down. The goals are to be a top five team. The goals are to play on New Year's Day in a New Year's Day bowl game. And vaguely, nebulously, perhaps number one. And that is not such an unrealistic goal at this point. Especially when you consider a number one team went down earlier today, Georgia Tech. Upsetting Virginia in Charlottesville, 41-38. The completion to Dave Moore on a first down pickup. Box stop with 9.15 left. In a football game, 38-0 Miami. Believe it or not, the Hurricanes have not registered a shutout this year. The 10 points surrendered at Texas Tech last week, their best defensive outing to date. Under a blitz, has it intercepted. Intercepted by Kevin Patrick. The Just like an ex tight end. Well, Stark was really in trouble on the screen, and the young man out of Lake Worth, Florida, stepped right up and comes up with his first career intercept. Well, two months ago, Kevin Patrick was playing tight end for the Hurricanes. He's been changed to defensive end. But really, this is a very instinctive play. Knows enough that if that tackle's sneaking out there, something's going on. Kevin Patrick says, I'm going to get in the middle of this. I might get me a ball. And he did. Now Patrick and Medeiros, two good-looking redshirt freshman defensive ends. Eric Miller, of course, out for the year with a shoulder injury. Medeiros stepped right in, and Patrick is pushing right behind. 8.50 to play. Toretta on first down. Lobs it for Carroll. Oh, he had the touchdown. Had he caught it in? Rare drop for Wesley. Wesley's not feeling too good. As we look at that ISO shot, perfect throw here. He isolates Wesley Carroll on Bobby Boykin. Throws it over the top. There's Boykin chasing. And off the fingertips. Here it is from the end zone. You got six, Wesley. All you have to do is reel it in. And he's hurting deep inside right now. Caress the football, says Jim Mandich. Love it. Bring it into your bosom. <laughs> On second and ten, Toretta will try again. Nearly picked off by Heath Snell, the sophomore linebacker. Pass was intended for Carlos Etheridge, number 82. Talk about the tight end of the future. You see Carlos Etheridge in the weight room. Big, rangy, tight end who can run. You also have to project that he's going to get in there in the battle with Coleman Bell. 6'5", 240, a sophomore out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Third down and 10 at the Panther 38. 
Beretta zings it incomplete, and again, a catchable football for Horace Copeland. The incompletion stops the clock with eight and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. Copeland, fourth down. Steve Israel shaken up, number 11, coming back off a series of injuries. Horace Copeland is really struggling right now. They really want to get him involved. Hope that he can be a factor the rest of the season in some games that are important. Just doesn't seem to be able to get it over the hump and get the confidence to make the play. On fourth down and 10. Miami sends too many players on the field. This one will not stand. The catch made. I believe that's Bobby Bird into the football game for the first time. Number 12. It is Bobby Bird. But Jason Marucci came jogging onto the field after the play had begun. College football update with less than three minutes remaining. Colorado 20, Nebraska 12. So they'll mark it back. It'll be fourth down and 15 for the Canes. And this is by no means Dennis Erickson trying to take advantage of or trying to rub it into the Pitt Panthers. He's got some young people out there that he wants to play in this situation. Paul Hackett understands that. First sack this afternoon for Pittsburgh. It comes from number 92, Keith Hamilton. And that's the 19th sack of his career. Timeout with 8.02 left in the fourth quarter. Miami heading towards their 34th consecutive regular season win here at the Orange Bowl. One would guess the Miami Hurricanes would enjoy the off week after this convincing thumping of their new Big East rival, Pittsburgh. Of course, we were joking with the Pitt people before the game, said maybe we should make it a football-basketball doubleheader, and they responded, that would be a good opportunity for us to get the split. 523 to 169. And it has been that lopsided a game this afternoon. And in this week off, the Miami coaches, the assistant coaches, will hit the road. Recruiting begins this week for the Miami program and all college football, and they're going to go out and try to replenish the cupboard. Scott Starks back to throw on first down and 10. He'll tuck it in and get a couple with a 46-yard line in Miami territory. Now recruiting the life flow of any football program. When you think about it, this coaching staff came in last March, did not get a full recruiting campaign, still came up with some quality people. One would expect this to be a bumper crop year for Miami's recruiting. I certainly would think so. And, and the point is, is well made and uh, well taken that the, the coaches came in. Uh, they were in a transition period. And other teams, other coaches take advantage of that uh, uncertainty in the minds of the other players that uh, the Miami team would be recruiting against at that time. Lance Markle straight ahead and not very swiftly. Picks up four yards. It'll bring up a third down and four. One of the true joys of being a part and covering this University of Miami football team is getting to know their head coach and their coaching staff. We've both had that opportunity. They are a hardworking and enjoyable group of men to get to know. And you like to see good people be successful. And certainly that applies to the Hurricane staff. A bunch of good guys and they're enjoying great success. Right on down from Dennis Erickson, the head coach, Greg Smith, the assistant head coach, Bob Bretkowski, who's the offensive coordinator. We'll take a quick, quick look at this play. Right side of the pit offensive line. Markle, a big fullback, gains a couple of yards. Sonny Lubeck, who coordinates the defense with Tommy Tuberville, the linebacker coach, Dave Arnold. The special teams coach, Bob Carmelo, Carmelowitz, who's done such a great job with this Hurricane defensive line. Nardi Kehoe with the offensive line. Ed Orgeron and Alex Wood with the running back. On fourth down and one, Lance Markle picks up the first down for the Panthers. Number 40, Lance Approaching the six-minute mark left in the football game. This one's been over for a long, long time. 38-0 Miami. Fourth down play. Been going with Marco exclusively. 
in this series. Big fullback gets it done. Darren Klein, number 91, in on the tackle. First down and 10 for the Panthers here, late in the football game. They're looking for some pride points here. Glenn DeVoe cannot get away from Derek Golden. Golden, the outside Glenn linebacker, DeVoe. a junior from St. Petersburg, Florida. So there'll be no Thursday lunch with our football coaching friends. That's been a fun tradition that began a couple of years ago. The Golden close on this. DeVoe slides to the left. There's Derek Golden making the hit. Russell Maryland still in the football game. Why? That's mildly stunning. So is Shane Curry for that matter. And Anthony Hamlet almost got a piece of start. Also missing is Mark Caesar. And it goes incomplete after it's all said and done. Darren Crime with the hit on the tight end, Dave Moore. Stopping the clock with five minutes even left. This is Patton. Nice cutback. First down, Marty Patton. Looking for more. Patton's still on his feet. Touchdown, Miami. 37 yards for Martin Patton. His first career touchdown. That was pretty. and play 76 yard drive you see where his point after sale right at you 45 nothing miami with 128 left in the football game 45 marty patton getting into the book with his first career touchdown jaunt covering 37 yards not satisfied with the first down he wanted every bit of it well i said they haven't stopped this play yet the counter trap this is all marty patton great individual effort he actually gets ahead of his blocking that's the cut that makes the touchdown he finds Doyle Aaron, who makes a good block. Now it's Marty Patton in the sprint to the end zone, and he's going to win. Boy, Doyle Aaron's going to love to look at that film. He's stuck with his block all the way. The end zone, good job. Set it up with the counter step. Step strong side, comes back weak side. Plant that right foot and cut back against the tide. Pick up some blocking. Push Doyle Aaron out in front of you. Good thinking, Marty Patton. Pretty rangy runner out in the open field. About 6'2", 215 pounds. Young man Marty Patton. He's going to make a few plays for the Miami Hurricanes before he leaves. Good looking straight up runner with a burst of speed. Marty Patton. Thanks to congratulations of his teammates, Diego London. The big man comes up. Marty Patton knows to take care of those big guys up front and say thanks, buddy. Well, we know Marty Patton will be watching every bit of this Sports Channel rebroadcast on Sunday night and Tuesday evenings. And calling mom and dad and probably requesting a tape or two. Wait his end-over-end kick coming to DeVoe at the 11. And he breaks into the clear. And DeVoe getting up near midfield with a 49-yard line. 39-yard kick return. David Diskowski on the stop. As usual, we have had much help up here in the broadcast booth from our statisticians. Plenty of numbers to keep track of. Jeffrey McCain has done his share of the work. And of course, Steve LeBeau, ever steady, does everything but the windows. We thank all of you and our Sports Channel crew here at the Orange Bowl today, led by producer-director Harlan Singer. On first down, Stark fires Start into the empty night. Only score of the fourth quarter, the Patton 37-yard run. They may call him the general before it's all said and done. George would be proud of him after that effort. Take no prisoners, Marty Patton. On 
second and ten, gets across midfield. Now one more Sports Channel telecast for the Hurricanes after this. In the football department, they'll come up when gentleman Jack Bicknell brings his Boston College Eagles to the Orange Bowl November 17th. You'll see it Sunday night here on Sports Channel November the 18th. No finer gentleman in college football than Jack Bicknell, but there have been tough times in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts over the last three to four years. Since the days of Darren and Doug Flutie, it kind of been tough times. Now, having a tough time keeping that talent in the Boston area in the Boston College. Well, they're going to get a new athletic director after this year. The great Jack Flynn calling in a career. Show some new leadership. Hopefully a breath of new life for that Boston College program. I was with them for three years before relocating down to Miami. I had the pleasure to work with two fine partners, Pete Cronin, who did a great job as a redskin linebacker, and a guy by the name of Gerard Phelan, who I know Hurricane fans are well familiar with. As I look down at the west end zone, I can recall well that day, December day in 1984, when Doug Flutie from midfield threw it up for grabs. Cheryl Phelan came down with it. Well, everybody. And the Heisman Trophy was won. Or Flutie. Markle again for not much on fourth down. Everybody refers to that play as the pass, except my friend Gerard Phelan, who will always look back at it as the catch. The catch. <laughs> no question. Spoken like a true receiver. But don't forget Boston College coming up November the 18th here on Sports Channel. Jim, but another fun year working these games with you. I'll not be able to do that game against Boston College. I'll miss, I'll miss that game more than the game will miss me. Certainly has been fun. Eric. 11 seconds left. The box stops on a change of possession. One more snap left in this ball. A dominant afternoon and evening for the Miami Hurricanes. Pitt will drop to 3, 5, and 1. And they will have gone 1, 5, and 1 in their last seven games. The Hurricanes will make it two in a row after the loss at Notre Dame. Their record will be 6 and 2. And don't forget the day that Craig Erickson had. Threw for well over 300 yards. 25 for 35, 355 yards. A banner day for Craig Erickson. A nightmare for Paul Hackett. Final score at the Orange Bowl. The Hurricanes make it 34 in a row here in the regular season. A handshake and a long walk for Paul Hackett. It'll be a nice week off for the Hurricanes. 45-0. Eighth-ranked Miami wins it. Expect them to move